Welcome to Hardly Initiated Live. It is your host, Tyshawn Jackson, here with another episode of my co-host, Ryan Ketchins. I'm excited for this one because what we found is that the, the audience really loves the panels. Yes. Especially when we talk about dating and marriage. And you know, listen, y'all yeah. know it's Hardly Initiated, so we got to initiate y'all today. And the way we're going to initiate y'all is we're going to do it with the elders in the community today. And I say that respectfully, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I say that respectfully. Yeah. Because we went ahead and we went ahead and uh, uh, brought in some OGs here. Y'all see the thumbnail? It says 50 year olds teach ladies the game, all right? So we about to have a mature perspective, an amazing conversation. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna get to introducing who we got. We got SB in here from SBU Live. Welcome to Hardly Initiated. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. SB Nation in the house. SB Nation. If you're from SB Nation, drop it in the chat. Say, I am here in the chat or in the comments. And we are also here with one of our most active followers on the IG, Harley Initiated. Let me tell you, Anita, shout out to you for creating such great conversation every time on the page. We are in here rocking with Anita from the Better Love Movement. Welcome to Harley Initiated as well. Thank you so much for having me. I haven't been this excited for a show in a very long time because yeah, likewise. to get a panel of very wise, very mature women who have, you know, these, um, you know, backgrounds, you're currently married. You know, you have a background where you ha you were uh, previously married mm -hmm. and now divorced and dating. So, I mean, such a great two a pair yeah. of two women here to start and have this conversation with. But before I look, before I get ahead of myself, I'm going to let Ryan tell the people what we got going on so we can get to this conversation. So, guys, anybody tuning in on Facebook, because you know what's crazy. So I went out to Morehouse Spelman Homecoming. Yeah. And it was people that's like, yo, I see y'all show and I watch y'all show on Facebook. I had to address them. Because wow. if you watch on Facebook, you only get the first 30 minutes. So please bring your butts over to YouTube <laughs> to make sure you join the chat. Yes. Also, guys, I want you to do this for us. I'm going to be dropping the link just shortly. It's an email list. We are trying to gather as much of you guys' contact information as possible. Because like we told y'all, we are going to be doing an in-person event and we want to make sure that you stay ahead of the game and abreast of exactly what we're doing. Yeah, yeah, Outside yeah. of that, we only ask that you hit the like button, not the hearts that's on the side on the chat, but actually exit out the chat. Take a look right under the video where you see the play button and the pause button and make sure you click that thumbs up because as many people as you share that with or, or click that, as many people as YouTube is actually going to share the video with. And we need that. Yes. Yes, y'all. So go ahead. Click that like button right now. That's the thumbs up so we can get this thing spread and rocking. But let's get to this wonderful conversation yeah. with our guests, because let's start here. Um, you know, we typically talk. We got a wide range of listeners. Some of our listeners go from their 30s, 40s, 50s, and we even have a growing group of listeners in their 60s. Ooh. So we're going to talk to a few of them here in this conversation. Because I want to know, and I want to ask you ladies this, because is dating, or put like this, actually, is marriage, shouldn't marriage be the primary goal for dating? And does your answer change for different, in, you know, women in different age groups? I'm curious to know that. We can start with you, SB. Ooh. <laughs> I would say yes. But again, different age groups then I, my, it would change. It would change a little bit. Yeah, the older you get, you may just want some companionship. It may not be a need to actually get married or an, and to join, you know, assets or what have you. So the older you get, I would think it would be more of a companionship. But if you're younger, you want to have kids, you need to have a husband. Absolutely. Okay, so before we get to Anita, I'm very curious about that because uh, I remember, this, this is my, my grandma's sister, so my, my aunt, right? I remember, uh, you know, I'm just overhearing conversations around Thanksgiving, holiday time, and they talking about my aunt's friend. Okay. And I remember being young, and I just remember thinking, what, like, they was mentioning it different. And I kept thinking, like, what does this mean? Like, I see, I see him come around the holidays. I see him bring his name up, you know, every now and then. And they, they have this level of reverence for him, but he wasn't really in the family. He was just known as my auntie's friend. So even to this day, I'm still very confused about <laughs> what kind of friend this is. So what is that companionship like? Does this mean that they're having sex? Are they just holding hands every now and then? Like, what does it mean when a, 
uh, older or more seasoned woman has this this man that's just been around forever without anybody committing per se. Okay, so you see that a little different. I see it. I was more thinking about a woman that is older actually meeting someone. Okay. A man that's been around a long time. I hate to say that's probably someone else's his husband. Wow. Yeah, and she she just couldn't marry him. Wow. But to answer my question, to go back to Ooh. what I was saying, when you're older, you just want companion. You want somebody to spend some time with, sit on the front porch with, mm. go to the movie theater with, things of that nature. And as far as intimacy, you all decide what it is you want to do. You know, sex is not maybe the, you know, on the front line of everything. But, you know, if y'all can still, you know, have sex, then maybe you will. Is that not friends with benefits? Not as not as an, as an older person, probably not. But, mm. you know, I don't think they would call it that because mm -hmm. they both probably still have everything separately. She probably has a home. He probably has a home. Mm -hmm. So where's the benefit? It's this more so is I just like spending time with this person. If mm -hmm. we decide to touch each other, then we do. It's a mutual agreement. Um, it does happen, but, you know, it's not like nobody's putting pressure on each other. If she doesn't do it, he's not going to be like, I'm going to find me another friend. Right. You know, it's just a mutual agreement. First of all, we got to have a family meeting with Ryan family real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I think auntie might have been. Well, the thing is, I think a lot of older women yeah. have that, you know, because that wasn't the first time I've heard that around in my family. Like, especially coming up, I would just know these guys. That one Christmas he's around, then two more Christmases later he's around. But everybody know this dude. Yeah, you know when when he passed away, people in my family was at the funeral. Like, mm -hmm. so you know I was just confused. So let me tell y'all why this is so common. I, I didn't I, look, Ryan. I'm, I'm gonna tell them the same story I told you a bit earlier. This is a ratchet story, but <laughs> young lady reached out to me and said, "Yo, Ty, I really want to ask you some questions. I need some help." Sometimes they do this, and I, I really don't respond. But I remember this young lady from high school. So I said, "You know what? Bam! Shout out my number. We hopped on the phone." This young lady is trying to become a um, a flight attendant and also is going to school to get her dentistry degree, doctorate. So she's very busy. Not only this, she's been dating this guy that she did because that she you know he she was he was doing this. He, she met him through doing hair because she does hair. So the brother was very smooth, cool brother. Used to come over after work, spend time with her all the time regularly. They built a really good relationship. Mm -hmm. And she even introduced him to one of her, with well, this was a little church, one of her, the guy, but I actually know this brother from high school too, God best friends, supposedly it's platonic, whatever the case is. And I kind of believe it. But anyway, that, but that dude even checked off on the brother. She was like, yo, everybody checked off on this dude. Come to find out the young lady gets pregnant. Okay. She calls the brother up and says, yo, I'm pregnant. And he says, man, I'm so excited. We having a baby, right? Okay. He's excited about the baby that's coming. Wow. Weeks come down to, week, weeks coming down to it. She gets a call from the brother. And out of nowhere, it's a completely different conversation. Mm -hmm. This brother starts to come clean. This brother admits on this conversation, not only does he have a son, mm -hmm. but he is now married. Damn. Okay. <laughs> so this brother is married with a son. And now this young, this young woman is two months pregnant. And because he delayed to tell her so long, yeah. and I think she had a few weeks to make this appointment to not be pregnant anymore, which what she told me was her plan, what her plan was. She didn't know she had two weeks. It was limited time because of where she was in her pregnancy. And she kind of, uh, because of all the classes and everything, she put on a back burner. When she finally went to the clinic, they told her she's beyond this point. Mm -hmm. And what she was asking me is, yo, Ty, like, I'm so confused. Like I never, like I never was the kind of person that would even have, I, my last boyfriend was all the way in high school and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on track in life and I run into this situation. Now I'm pregnant. I'm about to have a baby daddy. And I'm, I don't even think that I'm going to be able to keep my, this job and this career because I'm about to have a baby in seven months mm -hmm. while all of this is happening, all this momentum I've built. And then she goes on to ask me this, Todd, there's other guys that want to date me. Should I look at dating while I'm pregnant? What? I promise you. She Listen, this young woman was confused. She was truly confused. But again, she got caught up dating a man while he was married. Mm. And this brother pretty much communicated, yo, I'm going to work this out with my wife. I'm going to work this out with my wife. So this is a thing. Mm -hmm. When women are actually dating men that are married. I didn't mean to bring that up, but I thought it was just relatively relevant. 
Yeah, because I vote. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is cr- man, yo, that's crazy. Ooh. That co- is very crazy. Very crazy. Blessings. I hope you're watching. Is this for you? Because I told you I was going to take care of you in one of these episodes. I told her that because I told her we never talked about this. I want to ask you this. How is there any way a woman can tell that a brother might be married in the way he's moving or operating with her in practice? I think so. Um, Mm -hmm. If he's actually currently married and living within that marriage, Mm -hmm. you know, that after hour thing showing up sometimes and can't talk all the time, you know, got to call me at certain times of the day. You know, you're not able to go to his home. Mm-hmm. We have to go to hotels or different things of that nature. I think that is all means something. You got somebody significant somewhere. Yep. But if they're separated, I don't think that there you may not be able to tell if he's married. Wow. If the husband mm-hmm. and wife are separated, you may not be able to tell. But please tell blessings. Don't act in desperation. Yeah. Mm. Okay. You know, just chill out for a minute. Just breathe. Um, because you know, the situation could and will work itself out. So a woman should never date while she's pregnant, though. Just, just, I want to know your... No. Okay. Anita, Anita what, what you say? You over there shaking your head. It's not ethical. Um, and and it it's immoral. Like, I think it's immoral and unethical. Um, I am a big proponent of the background check. I've never dated a man that I did not run a background check on. So wow, like an actual government or like like with issues. his permission or just like on the low, no, just on the low. <laughs> now, once we're dating, I let him know, hey, I ran this background check. Um, <laughs> and she from the she she over there close to DC, you know, she's close to the Pentagon. <laughs> you know, she got to get the background check yeah. going. I mean, you running background checks on these brothers? Oh yes. And Is the Instagram not good enough? No, no, not even close. But depending on what I find out, so one gentleman, this was maybe eight years ago ran the background check, found out he had five children by five different women. And two of those women had (laughs) two two of those women had filed um, like a domestic violence charge against him. And so we were maybe two months into dating and, you know, nothing had happened, but I did. We went out to dinner and I let him know. Yeah. I, I ran this background check on you. This is what I found out. So I'm good. You know, I think I'm good. But that's what I suggest is that you take every precaution that you can, especially as a woman. You need to be safe. You need to make sure that you're safe physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally safe. Wow. And if she's pregnant, that young lady you mentioned, yeah, she's got some emotional safety to work out. Oh, right? my goodness. Yeah. And, and, you know, the thing about it is, man, she's like a past foster child. Mm-hmm. So, like, she really had to fight for everything. Like, that's mm-hmm. what she was explaining to me. Like, she was like, Tom, a hustle. I do hair. I'm about to yeah. dig at this. I'm about to get this degree. And, like, I've always been putting myself in a position of security because I yeah. value security so much because I never had it. And now I end up in this vulnerable position mm-hmm. in life. And it was really, it was really sad hearing this story um, because I could tell she was just lost in this place of confusion. And I know, you know, whether intentionally or not, you know, some women end up in there and that's just the reality of what, you know, sex can bring into Mm -hmm. your life. Like that's the reality of it. It's just exposure out there. It's risk out there that comes with opening yourself up to people that you don't really know. And even and, and even as a brother, but I'm gonna say, but women, they just got it different because yep. y'all literally have to literally carry that weight. That's but right. SB, what what is it? I mean, are men just that smooth, <laughs> or is it just something that? Because it sounds like this young lady is a very intelligent lady. I mean, you talk about these different things that she's doing, yeah, to improve her life. But at the same time, she's got taken advantage of what. And yeah. is that is that him even taking advantage of her? Or is it that was just deception. Her being, it was deception. Yeah. Okay, it was he wasn't honest. So it was deception. He didn't. She didn't know he had a kid, and she he didn't know she was married. Bro. <laughs> she didn't know he was married. But going to what you're saying, if even though she didn't know, if she would have preserved herself, right? Yeah, she could have prevented this whole situation. Yeah. But to go back to what you were asking, um, ask that question again. The way you asked it. So I'm just just trying to figure out: or is it just men that are just that smooth, like they criminals and thieves in the night, or are some of these women just? For whatever reason, more susceptible to being fooled than than others. No, I think that women just naturally, innately love men, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's quite easy to submit to them. Now, women are gonna go crazy, but that is a very submissive position mm-hmm. to lay up underneath a man and him impregnate you. Right? Yeah. Whether we want to admit to it or not, <laughs> so 
it's just natural for us to do that. And if he's saying the right, and he was a husband, this thing. So he is that person. He's kept. He mm. knows exactly what to do. Mm-hmm. He know how our home. He know how our home looks. Mm-hmm. So he was giving her all of that and all the things that she wanted to hear. He was also saying that because that's that was his life. Yeah. You know, maybe we just not getting the whole story. You know, right, right. It could possibly work out. Obviously, he cared about her, right? Hopefully. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, I mean, he sounds like psychotic because yeah. i mean to be happy about it and then call That's later fine. he yeah. just sounds I, honestly control. honestly i don't even think he's psychotic believe it or not i think a lot of brothers are, are like him because we talked about that in the last interview a brother who starts getting that itch where they want to experience something new they marry they want to try something new he's probably not confident enough to be able to just communicate his situation because the, the reality of the situation, a lot of these women, you tell them straight up you married and you could still have the same situation to play out. Mm-hmm. But see, because he's not confident in that kind of man that is going to communicate even his devious deviousness that he wants, mm-hmm. he decided to go the deceptive route. But a lot of guys, you know, feel like they may want to be single or they may want to try a new woman or mm-hmm. feel like they no longer want to be with their wife and have that emotion, that feeling. And he acted on it, got the worst of the situation. You know, because a lot of guys might get out scot-free. They might just have some sex with another woman, realize, you know what? I want to work it out with my lady. He ended up putting a baby in that young lady. Wow. And now he made a decision that he doesn't. He And at the point of that conversation, she said, Ty, I was so pissed off with him. I just hung up the phone when he told me. He doesn't even know I'm keeping the baby. Wow. So he don't even know what he's created. I'm hoping that they've had the conversation to this day. But unfortunately, I think that's a common thing. That's why we just we we can't make long term decisions right. on short term circumstances. So we just have to move smart. And the reality of it is sex as quick as that nut, that orgasm. I was about to get right. <laughs> as, quick, <laughs> as quick as that orgasm happens, we think it's all over with, but we don't know. Uh, listen, all the, the long term things that can come with that. Four, five, 10, 30, 60, however, whoever you is, yeah. listen, a lifetime can come along with that. So we just got to move smarter. SB mentioned uh, preservation. Got to. Okay. Yeah. Well, what, she about what, to piss people off. Yeah, yeah. So what exactly does that mean? Um, if a woman that wants to be married, she needs to actually preserve herself until that time. Um, I'm, I'm moving it back now. We're going all the way to the day we actually get married. Right. The way it sh- used to be, I should say. Mm. You know, we'll have sex on that day. Um, and it doesn't matter if you've already had sex before. If you want to be a wife, you need to align yourself with what the creator says it looks like. If you want those good results, this is my mm-hmm. opinion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So first thing, just like you said, there's this thing called post orgasm clarity. Mm-hmm. Yes. You yes. always get good sense afterwards. Okay. If you stay away from sex, you can have good sense all the time. Yeah. So just stay away from it. And then you'll be able to walk your way through these relationship uh, errors because I bet he put out so many red flags that he was married. So many every day. Yeah. And she just loved everything about him. She didn't see any of it. So she missed all of it because he probably was good in bed. It's probably what 10 to 12 years difference in age between them. Probably 10 to 20 difference. I got to double check. I, don't, I didn't ask that. I bet there is. Oh, I'm sure he's a uh, older, older man. Her. Yeah, I'm sure. Ooh. He really forgot her. I want to ask you this. So mm. let, let, let's actually talk about that because as far as age gaps, and you talk about women dating men that's 10, 20 years older. Do you recommend, do you think it's wise that a woman date well above her age? Or, you know, and, and when is that? No, is, is it just a certain age you should look to get way older? And when is it no longer a good age, if it is at all? Like, kind of walk me through that. In my opinion, I think a woman is always going to date. I would like to date a man older. It's six years between me and my husband. Okay. I would go up to 12. Mm. But I wouldn't go any further. But that's just my opinion. I think 12 years difference is the max. Okay. I like I like that. Six to 12. Six to 12 years? Mm-hmm. Okay. What, what's your thoughts on that one? I say seven. Seven years that women should, um, and I think I got that from the Nation of Islam. Yeah. Seven, seven years. Seven yeah. yeah. I think true. that's that makes sense to me. I have a 20-year-old daughter, and if she brought home a man that was 27, I would say, okay. What if he was 30? Oh, now we're pushing it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do understand that. I do understand that. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So, but, but why is that though? Like, is it outside of just, you know, the, the aesthetics, you know, of it? What's the, what's the real benefit of you saying you want to date a brother seven years older and six years older than you? Here's the truth. 
we're trying to outrun the whole phase. That's what we're really trying to do. Mm. A man is going to be in his whole phase if he's the same age as you. So we're trying to shoot past that in hopes of he's on the tail end of his whole phase. And now we're getting him. 27, he is his whole phase still. <laughs> well, it, it, yeah, it, it just depends. And it depends on where he was raised exactly. and where he was around and so on. But in this culture, 27 is still whole it phase. Is. But in general, seven years, I think that's going to be a, a more of a, a better match. Yeah. The, the man is going should be a lot more mature. Right. He should have some things that he could, you know, uh, impress upon a young lady, you know, mm -hmm. some some knowledge, yeah. you know, some yeah. experiences. And I, I do think because I because we talk to women our age and usually the women our age, they're like, no, I'm not finna date no older dude because of sex, because of all kind of stuff. They say right. they say yeah, the, the sex the, is number one. Actually. Number one. The, the sex thing is number one. But it's like, you know, you 35 years old, these 45 year old men like you, you the young thing. Yeah. And and they they loving you. They yeah. ready for you. Yeah. And, and they ready to to, to really get a life to you. Mm -hmm. Whereas 35 is. <laughs> You know, I don't think the 35 year old men are looking at 35 year old women the same, just to be honest with you. Nope. It's just just, you know, I've had some conversations in private. Yep. Yeah. And these men, they're not really looking at women at age. They're looking at younger women. Yeah. And, and, and of course, that's a safe generalization. Uh, Dr. Tar, we did an interview with him. He talked about the different phases of men's psychology when they hit mm -hmm. different phases of their life. Amazing, amazing interview. If you have not watched that joint, he talked about in the 30s, typically men are still not yet at large looking for marriage in their 30s, whereas he said something special happens with men in their 40s because that's when they probably had their first doctor's appointment all by themselves. Okay. They probably probably broke their first bone or got some bad news or whatever the case might have been, and they in this doctor's office, like they having these experiences now where they look at life very different. This epiphany yep. hits where now they potentially see themselves dying alone, yep. being alone. And that mindset really starts to kick in. So I agree that typically is what it is. So even do you think that that, you know, six to seven year rule that applies like as like regardless of, you know, where a woman is like she should probably always shoot for that. Or if a woman is now, you know, in her, 50s or in her 60s is it now okay to potentially even date younger than you at that point mm. i never thought about dating younger than me so mm. i i would say no it was just me the six to seven would start at 30 for the man mm. so it would be he would have to be 30 his the maturity level of a 30 year old man is totally different from a 27 year old so even me putting that six to seven year on them starts at 30. So if I was, you know, you know what I'm saying? I'm 25, yeah. my husband was 31, you know what I'm saying? That, mm -hmm. that works. But I wouldn't have been 20 yeah. and my husband would have been 27. That still wouldn't have been good enough for me. I was still wouldn't have wanted to marry him until he was 30. Mm. So after 30, um, I think that men mature a lot at 30 and over. Mm -hmm. um, but to get older, I, I don't know. Now, as women, know. we we got, <laughs> it's so funny. So we get all kind of messages now. And one of the messages that we've been getting is about, you know, women, the older women, they're like, hey, look at look at me, look at my young man. And y'all need to talk about how we can have a successful relationship because I love this young man I got. And it's funny because me and Tashawn, we'd be looking and it <laughs> <laughs> it just looks like the younger men that they're dating, they need. They need guidance. That's they what it looked like. They need that situation. It looked like, yeah. As a matter of help. a fact, would you, mm. I need in this point in your life too, would you consider a, a man who's younger than you? And if so, how, how much, how much younger would you, would you really consider? So I've only dated one man in my entire life who was older and he was four years older. All the men I have dated, including the man I married was younger. Wow. How much younger? Uh, 10 years, 12 wow. years. Wow. Damn. So, <laughs> wow. So, it, why is it because do you just generally preference younger guys? Is that what it is? I mean, I have a youthful spirit and, yeah. um, you know, I'm youthful and adventurous and the things I want to do, older men don't want to do. Mm. I, I want to oh. work out five days a week and I want to, you know, climb Mount Kilimanjaro and I want to jet ski and I want to parachute and I want to, you know, I want to do adventurous things. And a lot of older men don't want to do that. 
Wow. I could see that. I could oh. totally see that. That's, and you know what? Yeah. First poll of the night. What you got? Uh-uh. I want to know how many women would marry a younger man. Let's ask that. 100%, right? No, I mean, I mean, they found somebody. That I mean, first they, of all, what is they, younger, though? I mean, yeah, well, let, let's get some more detail. Okay. On we'll marry a man seven plus years younger. Yeah, you Do you want to go seven or 10? Because, I mean, I mean, this is the thing. It is about if they if assuming they love the person, I think it should be 100%. I mean, somebody love you. You think they'll be 100%? And they, I mean, if they're willing to marry you and, and they love you. Somebody just put never in the chat. <laughs> I guess we can see. We can see. I mean, let's put it in the, the chat. Thing is, it's, let's it's, put a lot the of, it's a lot of single women that's looking for long term relationships. So I right. figure if you find somebody that love you, let's go. Yeah, but men control relationships. So he would have to want to be with her. Right. Long term. Yeah. A marriage. Mm-hmm. He would have to ask her. Women control sex. Yep. Men control relationships. So he would actually have to want this older woman in order to make it happen. I've been, I, you know what, y'all? This is not fair for me. I've been married 28 years. Okay. So wow. I have no idea. Right, right? <laughs> but in my mind, I don't think I would date anybody younger ever. Mm. Mm. Especially not six or seven years. You know, maybe a year or something like that. That wouldn't matter. But six or seven years? Oh, no. Well, psych- Interesting. Psychologically speaking, they have said that technically younger men and older women are a perfect match. Possibly really? For a lot of reasons. Wow. So, okay. Hold on. Hold on. Wait. wait, wait. Mm. Hold on. Hey, she got yeah, some- I want to I pause on that poll. What, yeah. what, what you, you keep the secrets over there. Yeah, What's the reasons? So there are sexual reasons where... Women 40 plus, where we've reached our peak, especially if you can't procreate anymore. Mm-hmm. Sex is purely recreational for us. Mm. And we have a lot of experience in that area that a lot of young men want to know about. And your, oh, dr- yeah. and your drive is actually a bit higher as yeah. well as you get. It sure is. Interesting. No yeah. consequences with that one. Interesting. <laughs> yep. <I see. laughs> <laughs> and you'll get up and cook a meal afterwards. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is the thing. In terms of dating, depends on <laughs> funny. it depends on what it is. I, I mean, I could totally see that. I can see. I, can, I can totally see I that. Can totally see and a, less you know, drama. Yeah. There's less drama. We have our lives together. We have our homes and our 401ks, and you know, we are very stable. We bring less drama. So like, oh, okay, you coming back next week? Great. Well, I mean, what assuming, about the relationship though. You, see, that's my thing. Because yeah. assuming you got a, a beautiful older woman and she's gonna do all those things, absolutely, I'm up for mm-hmm. for an experience. Mm-hmm. So, is there? I mean, is there some level of inherent risk that comes with dating a younger man because he may not actually be willing to 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 move forward with the the a marriage? But again, as SB has already spoken to, a lot of older women want companionship. Yeah, they um, don't want to get married. They're not trying to intermingle, you know, their good job, yeah, their pension, or mm-hmm. everything that they've acquired. They want companionship, and a young man is like, okay, give so, us an age range. What are, what are we talking about? Um, so I'm 55. That would look like the youngest man I dated recently was 45, 44. He was 44. Um, so 44, 45, maybe 50. Hey, 45 year old brother, y'all better drop your IG in this joint right now. I'm fellas. telling you. She said she worked out five days a week. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, it's, uh, and I want, I want to kind of take it here to the uh, transition a bit for us in this conversation because I think it's important when we talked about um, the concept of marriage. By the way, that was all unplanned and so perfect <laughs> at the same time. But we were talking about marriage and wanting and desiring marriage because uh, uh, it's, it's been this here. I hear this mindset I hear too sometimes. I hear women say things like, I don't want marriage. Mm-hmm. I hear women say that. And I have my philosophy on where that idea might come from. But just in general, what do you think if you hear a woman in particular say that she does not want marriage for herself? What do you take from that, SB? Bad relationships in the past. Because I think everybody wants a very... I can't see someone turning down a man that treats them good, Mm -hmm. that loves, cares for them, respects them. You know, it's just wanting to be one with them, you know, sincerely, Mm -hmm. a good relationship. I can't see a woman turning that down. So I would think it would just come from having bad relationships, some past traumas that you didn't um, cancel yourself out of or something of that nature. I just can't see a woman turning a a good man away for no reason. So they're really not choosing to be single. It's more of some some hurt. 
Yeah. That's what I think. I, and they just haven't gotten help for that hurt. And they just kind of not necessarily labeled every man, but basically labeled every man. Yeah. Mm. You know, yeah. don't want to go through it because they're afraid. It's a big fear that, oh, this could happen again. You know, because I love my husband. I even like him. Yeah. So it can happen. Mm-hmm. So same for you, Anita. You think it's some some past I believe issues? that deep inside of every woman's DNA, she wants to be owned. She wants to be owned by the man that she is with. Absolutely. And let me clear that up. Oh, you don't have to. She, yeah, I'm she wants to. So it's like uh, this is how I explained it to a client of mine. So if there was a feral cat in the alleyway beside your building and every now and again you went out and you fed it or you gave it milk and you pet it. Um, that's one thing, you know, that cat is out there on its own and it's just fending for itself. It's another thing. If you go out there and you take that cat in and you bring it into your home and you clean it and you, you know, treat it for fleas and it knows it has a security that, you know what, I am owned by this person. I am no longer feral. There are a lot of feral women out here. Mm. Feral women. Wow. They are not properly contained or owned by a man. And they have no idea what that even is. You know, it's it's like I said in a reel that I created where I said we can no longer say that man is mine. I belong to him. That's seen as misogynist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that's what I believe every woman wants. They want to be someone's. They want to be owned. Wow. Had to contextualize that one. <laughs> no, that was that was. But good. no, I get it. Like, that was good. Yeah. I, I 100% get it. So both of you are just relatively on, on the on the page of like that generally is unhealthy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would say I like own because it makes the most sense. But some of us would relate more to being covered. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, you come from your father's home and he covers you and you go into right. a marriage situation and you're covered by your husband. Um, and if that transition doesn't happen or if you've never seen it before. Mm-hmm. You're definitely missing something, right? Yeah. So right. women want to be covered. What about oh, the yes. What about the brothers though? What about when you hear the brothers say that? Do you think it's the same? Is it the same situation with the brothers that uh, a man that thinks I don't want marriage could he have had that same experience? I think it is all fear. Yes. Yeah. Mm. I think yeah. it's all based in some sort of fear. Yeah. Okay. Right. And the- and we know that fear is based on the family law. Like, that's a fact, you know, as someone who counsels people and um, appears in family law court, I used to be a, a uh, gal, a guardian ad litem years ago. Um, it's a thing. You know, the, the court system isn't fair. It right. is not fair to men. Um, a woman can show up and she can, for no reason at all, want to end her marriage and she can take more than half of what they've accumulated. She can take the children. So, yeah, they, they, it's a real fear. It's a very real fear that a lot of men have. Yeah. And and also the just just the media in general, because I don't really see uh, marriage um, as ugly as it's promoted. Mm-hmm. I don't see as much mu- as many positive messages yeah. about marriage in general. You know, the hottest thing is the divorces. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. going on. Let's uh we need to talk about uh Samantha Lee who we just had on the show. Actually, so and you get know your what? perspective on that. Let's get let's go to the hard take. Yeah. So let's go ahead and actually what we're gonna do, y'all. We're gonna actually play the video for our listeners that may have watched it. We actually had Samantha Lee come up um on our show, which is the ex-wife of Tyrese, famous actor and singer. And she talked a bit about her experience with the divorce and even admitted that the reason for her divorce was because of the people she had around her. Yeah. And we'll actually play it for you guys so you guys can get some context. Y'all, gonna, y'all might have seen this on Essence, Vibe, Complex, BT, mm-hmm. Candace Owens, Breakfast Club, everything. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead and get a play. Do you think you still would have actually gone through a divorce? Not that time. Okay. Oh, I've never said this publicly. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, guys. No, this is what we do. This is, this is the exclusive, baby. <laughs> the truth about the matter is that if I had different people in my ear at that time, I would not have made that decision. No, and that's the truth. I was very, very hurt. I was very angry, and I remember when I made the decision, I was like hysterically crying mm. on the phone with my attorney. I was extremely emotionally intoxicated. Mm. 
I'm an extremely emotional person, but I know women specifically, there will be moments where they'll be like, I'm ready to be done. I can't stand this. He don't do this. And we're just focusing on these things. And because you don't have a certain person in your life to check you and say, sis, what about this? What about these strengths? What about what he's not doing? That can get you thinking about the positive aspects of this person that you may not be thinking about when you're upset. And so in those moments, you need somebody for that person. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that was a, a very controversial take, especially because, you know, mm -hmm. Tyrese had put out a lot of a uh, lot of information about kind of what was going on, what yep. his opinions was about his experience with her. And it had been I don't think she ever has come out and shared any type of information about, you know, her role in the divorce proceedings and kind of how all that. That was her first time. And before yeah. we actually get into it, I need everybody here. On the Facebook to come over to YouTube. Let's end that Facebook stream. The you listen. This is the fastest we've ever had over a thousand people in the chat ever. It truly is. We yeah. got over a thousand people in here. Eleven right hundred in the chat. So what I want to do, everybody, we had two hundred and sixty-six likes. Let's get to five hundred likes really quickly. Everybody, hit the thumbs up so we can continue to push this message out to build up the room here. Get us to five hundred likes really quickly, guys. We got the and SB, uh, the, the SB gang up in here too, which yeah. is dope. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. yes. So, so let's go ahead and let's actually get to it. I want to actually ask ask some questions about um, you know, that video we just watched. Mm -hmm. Esby, what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you when you hear that? She just seems so immature. Um, it just seems like what she said she was should have known. Mm -hmm. Um, why would you ever go to someone that speaks negatively about someone that you're mad at? And expect yeah. you're going to get some good advice from that person. Right. Um, it just is. I just expected more. I just seems as, as though she would have been more mature in her thought process, especially yeah. when you're talking about ending your marriage. It's okay to go to a sister girl or a girlfriend when you just want to vent. Right. But when you're talking about actually ending your marriage, it just seems like she uh, should have known better. Right. Wow. Right. Mm. What about yourself, Anita? I have a client that I'm actually counseling right now. And, um, you know, I make people wait 30 days. You have to wait 30 days. Mm -hmm. You do not get to make a, a lifetime decision like that, especially when you're in high emotion. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I make people wait 30 days. If you're going to separate, that's one thing. But you're not going to end your marriage until those 30 days passed. So I wish she had someone telling her that which is wait 30 days, let your emotions calm down, get some wise counsel. Um, things could have turned out differently. Oh, wow. But think about this, though. Did she have her divorce attorney on speed dial? Right. I mean. Interesting. How do you just. Right, yeah. End up with it. Yeah. Right. I actually think that she may have been talking to someone that was more influential in her life, like a mama. Mm. Oh, okay. So uh, I think, that, what, I think, what, what I think that's she, actually what, what Tyrese was saying too. But, but what mm. could what could the mom be saying? What, what are you saying? Like, what could she be informing her to do? Divorce her husband. Mm. You don't have to put up with this stuff. She don't like men. Mm. I don't care for men. I'm divorced. He ain't going to be no better. It's going to only get worse. All those things. Wow. Wait, so, so, so mothers are out there passing along these oh, toxic yeah. messages. Yeah. And I, I think her mother's been married three times. Wow. Yeah, her mother has three divorces under her belt. Wow. Damn. I didn't know that. Yeah. I did not know the information. That's something that Tyree should have probably looked at too, is what I'm thinking. So is that is that something that a guy should look at? Should a should a man look at the the, the dating history of the mother you, to you, be able to 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 evaluate the woman he's he's dealing with? Absolutely. You need to evaluate wow. the whole family. Everything. Yeah, you need to you, know if there's yeah. diabetes, is yep. there's a uh, please, please really evaluate the whole family. The whole family. Whole family. You, need to know if there's, you need to go to the family reunion. You need. You need. To, if there's yeah. evidence of addiction mm -hmm. around with somebody, mm -hmm. a prostitute mm -hmm. in their past, all of that needs all to be it. just disclosed. Yep. You know, if you decide to accept it, okay, but at least you go in with your eyes wide open. Exactly. Instead of going in and then finding out all these things later on. Right. But the reason why I said mother is because my mom hated me and. Mm -hmm. due to her own relationship, even though she was married to my father to death. Mm -hmm. She was a wife. She did everything she was supposed to do as far as cooking, cleaning, you know, no matter what he did, his plate was made, but she did not like men. Their relationship mm -hmm. was awful. Mm -hmm. So the thing wow. is, the thing is we, we have men in that, in the chat, just in our audience that I would say they may not come out and say this, but they are 
misogynists. Mm -hmm. And then we have women as well who are misandrists. Yeah. And yeah. I would say, we got a lot of those women. <laughs> we got a lot of them. I'm just being, because you can read the comments and you can kind of tell that it's some things kind of going on underneath the surface. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So is it is it any, like if somebody, even if they don't identify as misandrist, matter of fact, how about this? If somebody was questioning where they stand in the spectrum, mm -hmm. what are some indica indicators that might suggest I'm a person that is misandrist or And just to be clear, misogynist is any prejudice against women, where misandrist is any prejudice against men. And I'm, and I'm glad all of these people are, are part of the audience, by the way, because that's the that's the whole purpose of the show, yeah. is for us to come with it's these. It's to come together. Exactly. And have the conversation together. <laughs> we'll go ahead. Right. So what are some signs that I might be misandrist? And then we'll go to Anita and some signs I might be misogynist. Mm. You would just, what did she do? It was her fault. Everything is her fault. She broke up the marriage. Instead of actually hearing, you know, everything's a woman's fault per se. Or you lean towards Got you. a woman being the reason for whatever the situation may be. And as far as a woman, it would be, what do you do to your girl? Yeah. yeah, I bet he did. He didn't come home last night and that might not even be the reason. I mean, none of that, all that could be wrong, but it would be the man being the one or the reason for the problem, even if it wasn't a problem. Okay, so everything that come out their mouth pretty much is the other person is at fault for the no situation. No accountability, right? Mm -hmm. No accountability. It's the victim game. Yep. It's the mm. victim game. Got yep. it. Got it. Mm. Okay. That victim game, that's a clear sign. Yeah. So. And just a, an overall disdain, a contempt. You know, there's mm. a contempt that comes along with misogyny and misandry. You know, there's just this contempt that... Um, you know, I love men. I love that they created this entire world that I live in. I love that they're, you know, they're they're doing all the jobs that I don't want to do. <laughs> no, I absolutely adore men. And I said this last week on a live. If if the world were ending, I want some kick ass men on my team. Absolutely. I want some gun toters. I want some, you know, some jujitsu fighters or mm. whatever. I want strong men on my team. I had a strong father. Um, I want you to look at that. If there's no strong father in the picture, that's a big red flag. If there were, if the woman was raised by nothing but women, you got to look at that. There, there's some, there's definitely some misandry there because again, they can't appreciate a man. They can't right. appreciate everything that a man brings to a situation. So that family, like we said, you got to look at that family. Um, for Hold on, now that's a lot of families though. That's a, long that's a lot of families. families. You're attaching yourself to someone for the rest of your life, right? Mm. Right. That's a lot of years. That's a lot of attachment. Yeah. Find out. And is it just as as, as well for a woman vetting a, a man, mm -hmm. the relationship that he has with the father and the mother, is there anyone in particular that, that that's more important to you off the top of your head or they both are equally important to vet for health? Well, see, listen, um, you do have to ask questions, but I don't think women are in a position to vet men. So mm. I think women should just pay attention mm -hmm. when it comes to a male in relationship. Just pay attention. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Hold on, so, wait, so the, put, hold on, wait. I want to make okay, sure you go, got yeah, that. Yeah, women go are not in a position to vet men. They just need to pay attention. What's okay. the difference between vetting and pay attention? Vetting, you're asking a lot of questions. You're uh, you're putting them in situations. You just you just. Mm -hmm in there mm. asking a lot of questions where I think you should see how, see, if you tell a man what you want, the wrong man will give you exactly what you said oh, you want. He sure will. So if you're asking questions and you saying, and he's asking you questions, what would you like, what, what kind of man do you want to, you want in your life? Mm -hmm. He will become that man. So if a woman won't verbalize it and she just sees how he moves naturally, then she can see if that's the man for her. Right. And so, then when yep. it's time to court or marry, then you could take up to your uncle, your dad, mm -hmm. other men, and then he can put them to the test of, OK, let's move to the next part of this relationship. And then that's where we start divulging all of this craziness that goes on within the family. Wow. So so women are essentially giving men the roadmap to their heart. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And the men just, and they just <laughs> wow. falling in line. That's say, I want a God fearing man. I go to church every Sunday, yeah. and they'll go. But do they have a relationship with God? Right. Mm. So that's why I say women shouldn't vet. That makes sense, though. I mean, <laughs> now that would take a team. That's a team effort, right? And right. you got to have some trusted males yep. in your oh, family yeah. to yeah. take them to. 
as well. But I, I like that strategy. After it's very they smart. got past the first threshold, then they go to those men in the family. Right. Yeah. So, so let me ask you this. Going back to the video that we just watched and we reviewed, we see that she said that she made a decision because of the community that was in her ear. What's the ideal community that a woman should have to insulate her in the marriage? Mm. It would have to be a mom and a dad, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but if you don't have that, I think it would just have to be a relationship with you and God. Because a lot of times we don't have it. So mm. I think you have to align yourself to, so, to know exactly what's good for you and what is right. There's a blueprint for marriage in the Bible. We can always go mm -hmm. back and look at it and see what a husband looks like, what a wife looks like. And the more we align with that, the better off that we are. If we don't have those people in place. I don't believe in sisterhoods. You know? Wow. So, no. Well, hold on one more way. You're going to have to break that down for me. So, because <laughs> right, the first thing I thought about, most people say a woman needs to be around other married women. She needs to see what that married woman looks like, but be around. I don't entertain single women at all. Okay. Now, if she's wanting to be a married woman, I will give her what she needs and direct her in the right direction to do so. But we're not hanging out because single people don't think like married people. Mm -hmm. We don't. So her interest is for herself. Now, when she wants to become that wife and I'm directing her to God and like, this is what we need to do. You got to read some books. You have to align yourself. You got to change your Instagram. Mm. There's no way that I'm going to be on Instagram showing myself and say that I'm preserving myself and I'm a changed woman trying to be a wife. Don't make sense. You, right. may, you mentioned that in one of your last shows. Yep. Yep. It doesn't work like that. You know, if I'm seriously, seriously thinking about becoming a wife, I'm doing everything. My mindset is totally changed. Yep. I am seeking out what a wife actually looks like. There are places wow. that uh, a single woman can go to become, you know, hang out with a married woman. But it's not like we're going out with girls trips and things of that nature. There could be women's retreats mm. and things of that nature mm -hmm. that, that she can actually come along with. Okay. But just us hanging out and you coming over my house and things of that nature. We're not doing that. So you just we just have to align ourselves with what God says and let him use us and just talk to women, I guess, and then come to certain platforms where you learn how to be a wife. Now, I talk about being a wife, you know, how modest you should be, how your mm -hmm. speech should change, you know, how your response should be to men, respectful and things of that nature. It doesn't mean that we can't, we have to agree. I don't have to agree with a man to respect him. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't mean I'm submitting to him either. It's just that we have a difference in opinion and you can do that as an adult, but I, sometimes it gets all messed up because this social media platforms that we are on and you know yeah. it messes you up you don't understand what submission really is you don't understand what obey really is right so you have to actually study being a wife in my opinion so hold um, on, i need some game for me because you know I, i'm really in a place where I'm, I'm truly like considering marriage is like the next level up for me as a man period and i started reading the purpose and power of marriage dr miles monroe right mm. So as I started reading this book, I instantly started thinking, I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to, now what, ha I'm halfway in the book now and I'm like, oh, I need to smash a bunch of marriage books because that book alone is really like the way it's gearing me up and how relevant it is for what's about to happen and just the preparation it gives you an understanding. It reminds me of when, you know, me and Ryan, typically when we're about to make a big decision in business, we typically get a coach. Yep. And what happens is that coach puts us in a position to increase the likelihood that we have success mm -hmm. by helping us understand a framework for how to have success, tells us some threats we might have to watch out for, mm -hmm. gives us the formulas that we need. Mm -hmm. It pretty much gives us a little prep kit yeah. for what you're about to get into. And equally, I imagine that when I'm reading this, I'm like, wow. First of all, in halfway the book, I'm like, man. Folks that went in the marriage and ain't read this, <laughs> they, they in I can imagine yep. they really you you got jump you got thrown into a gunfight and you just bare fisted right now. Yep. So should I also be looking the woman I'm dating? Should she should be just as serious about reading these books and educating herself in this way before I even consider that decision? I think so. I yep. think you have to learn even one more. Um, at the beginning of our marriage, I read The Power of a Praying Wife, which taught me about men. Because I think women that are married need to know men. Mm -hmm. I needed to know my husband. 
I needed to know how you all function. So that was a big read for me. The power of a praying hey, wife. You better write these books down. Okay, I'm gonna listen, that we, hey, you better write these down. The power okay. of a praying wife. Yeah. Okay. Um, it outlines, I think, maybe five five different personality mm -hmm. of men. Yep. And you're reading it, and it takes you to certain scriptures along the way. And all the while, you think that this man is changing because you're seeing things change, but it's really just you. Right. You're gaining empathy and compassion for the man that you're with. You're understanding him. You're actually becoming one with that man. That's what the book does for you. Right. Mm. But as far as um, this being a wife, see, I, I don't even think a lot of people, when they're thinking about becoming married, they even they even know the concept of marriage. You know, God, man came first. You know, he made woman for the helpmate mm -hmm. of the husband. I don't think they even understand that. I think that's like this is something we say and we move on. It's just a good read in the Bible. Nobody ever dies into it and say, hey, what does this mean? Mm -hmm. That's why we take that role as wife for granted. That's why women are someone somewhere saying, oh, this is a slavery position. If you knew how serious that position was, mm -hmm. you wouldn't see it as a slavery position. You would see it exactly for what it is. I mean, life is in this woman yeah. that runs this household, that that caters to this man that empowers this man yep. and submits to this man. This is, this is life. And we carry that. And I always say, mm -hmm. if we are better women, we're going to have better men. That's it. Cause a man that's ain't it. not going to give up a good woman. Right. Right. That's He's going to do all he can. Yeah. That's the basis of my platform. That's why my platform exists is to create better women. And right. that's what I keep telling them. If you change the standard, men are going to meet that. But as long as you lower yourself down, they're going to go right down to the gutter with you. So, yes, a woman should be just as passionate about doing what you're doing, if not more so. If not more. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's really good because if you, if you consider it, man, like. If you don't see you or really you, too, I think as a person, just just being accountable to whoever's listening to this. If you're probably not willing to read a book about marriage before you get into it, you're probably not going to be willing to deal with not a damn thing that comes on on the back end of marriage. Definitely. Nope. So I think that's a really good precursor for y'all to really see if y'all are going to be able to work on the back end of marriage by just being able to work on the front end before y'all get into it. Because it is so easy to get into and not as easy to get out of. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Anita, your following is mostly men or women? So right now I'm at 62% men. Okay. Yeah. And then SB, what about you? I'm, I'm more men. Okay. So, and the reason I ask that, because I've never seen this many men in the <laughs> chat. It's a lot of men in the chat right now. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. And we've had conversations on the show that, hey, men don't really like relationship talk. Mm -hmm. And honestly, that was, that was my perspective, unless it's extremely divisive. Right. Right. Now that we got a bunch of men in the chat, they seem to be some mature men. They kind of, you know, mm -hmm. saying how they feel in the chat. I'm just very curious from you guys perspective. Why don't you think more men tune into our channel? Uh, I thought you all started out being more male focused. Did you have more men starting out? No, nah, we never. No, did. never. We never. We oh, never had more never. men. I did not know that. I thought we would too. SB you looking know? over there like she got a mouthful over there. Because <laughs> this is the thing. Women want to know. And, and yeah. we run into women in public all the time. They're like, hey, I love what y'all doing. Mm -hmm. How do we get more men involved in this conversation? Because the whole reason that the women are coming to the platform is because they want to get better. They want to better navigate trauma and past challenges. They want to mm -hmm. be able to, uh, you know, get to the level of personal fulfillment that they know mm -hmm. they deserve. Yep. And yeah. at some point, they want to be at minimum prepared to be able to facilitate and be open to this loving connection from a man. Yeah. So they ask, hey, Ryan and Todd, where are the men? So SB, why are the men not, they listening to you two, mm -hmm. they on y'all's platform, but why haven't they come to Harley Initiated? I think it's because y'all said this is a very safe space. Mm -hmm. So I don't think you all hold the women as accountable as, as men would like to see you do. Wow. Um, just because even like Miss Samantha, um, she said a lot of things, but I did not hear her say just straight out, I was wrong. I, I threw away my marriage. And I think women need to say those type of things so they won't make the same mistakes again. They need to hear themselves totally admitting exactly what they did, whatever the process was, so they don't have to do it again. Because if I bring in other people, oh, the person I called on the phone, they led me to do this. Really? You know, you still you call the divorce attorney. They were just doing their job. Oh, these people over here, they brought them in. No, no, no. Stop. 
you did it by yourself. You thought of it all. And if you just stop right there, I think that more women, uh, more men would listen to what you're saying because now you're holding these women accountable. You know, because men love, y'all love like really hard. Yeah. And I'm hurt right now. And she's over there talking about she called her divorce attorney. She called them. Y'all tell her she called them. Yeah. Mm. Y'all ain't going to do that. Y'all going to listen to whatever they're saying. And it's going to be okay because there's there's some amount of accountability there. But it's not that hard. I mean, y'all are men. It's not that logical to the point, you know, you did it. Mm -hmm. Don't y'all want to hear that? I get what you're saying. Men no, absolutely. Wanna, men want to yeah. hear you know, no word salad. They want to hear, I did it. Yeah. Now let's fix it. They want to be solution-based. Women are not solution-based. We want to just talk about what happened, yep. how it made me feel. Right. Um, yeah, I did it. I messed up. And as long as you give them that place to come and do that, then they're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. But the men are not going to want to hear that. Right. Mm. They want to hear that you good now. Um, I, I can't fix you. Um, I don't want to fix you. And that's me. I'm not, you know, I'm like, ladies, you're going to get it together. Mm. Men are not going to fix you. And I'm holding the ladies accountable for it. That's why they kind of, you know, don't flock to me because I'm always, you know, in their ear. You had three kids. What woman talks about a woman's babies? All mm -hmm. I said was you had three kids, but they heard me say these babies did this, these babies did that. They heard me say so many other things. And all I said, you have three kids. Right. But they take it somewhere else and they run, don't they? Right. You know, right. they didn't hear me it just make it. All I said, all I said, it was a fact, but right. it's like, how could you do that? Yep. Mm. And the men, you know, they just want us to recognize every part of what we bring into the table because they're saying they come in 100%. Mm -hmm. You come in 100%, maybe, but you got 103. Acknowledge the 3% that you got, that I got to take care of if I pick you. We got to figure this out because we we did a poll. I think it was last week or the week before. It was um, how many women or, or did women, it was like ladies only poll, do you believe in gender roles and i think another one was do you believe in submission yeah but the women were like hey yeah. yes do. i'm down with gender roles absolutely i'm yeah. down with submission absolutely yeah. but of course it has to be with the right man. with the right the, man, the right man. Yep. so anita is there a middle ground where we can is is there a way that we can fashion these conversations to where it'll be both men and women involved in the same conversation or do we got to keep doing collaborations where we got to bring <laughs> the men and the women together <laughs> We are what I love about what's happening in 2023. So we are seeing men become more emotionally intelligent, go to therapy, read books. Like we are starting to see men step up. And some of these women are not ready for that. They're not ready for an emotionally intelligent man, a well-read man, um, a spiritual man. We're seeing men starting to step up. And yes, we need to hold some of these women accountable. Um, women and men are different. I've always preached that. I don't want to change that. Um, I love being a woman. I also am very much in, in touch with my masculine side of myself. So I'm kind of split right down the middle. I, I can be compassionate and loving and nurturing. I can also be incredibly logical and rational and fact-based. So I know how to work in both of those lands. I'd like to see more people be that way. And it's possible. It's called integration, right? So while I am predominantly a feminine woman, I am very much aware of the masculine side of myself. I can integrate that. That's what allows me to be accountable and responsible and not be the victim is I can go over here and say, mm, Anita, you opened your legs. You did that, you know, like, you know, and keep it real with yourself. You did that. You did that. You have great power. You have the power to keep your legs closed or you know, the other. Um, and I want to see us do that more. I want to see women start to integrate that more and not live solely in this land of the feminine. I know that's like a whole thing now is be more feminine, but it's like the pendulum has swung from here, like all the way to here. And we need to bring it like right in the middle. Mm. We need to bring it right in the middle. I think that will be helpful. Same with men. I have some great male friends who have figured out how to integrate their masculine side and their feminine side. What does that look like? I have a guy right now, close friend of mine, you can put an AK-47 in this hand and you can put a newborn baby in this hand and he will know what to do with each of them. Mm. That's an integrated man. Okay. So he is strong. He is powerful. He protects his family. He is tender. He is, you know, soft with his kids. 
That's the type of integration I'd like to see us start to talk more about. Mm. So it's not just one or the other. I'm all feminine. No, I'm not all feminine. I run two businesses. I have a household. I have things to do. But I've learned how to integrate that. So within my relationship, I am the feminine. I've made that decision and I'm only dating a masculine. But clearly, I know how to be responsible. If something happened to my masculine, bills are going to get paid. Things are still going to get done. So I want to talk more about integration. I think that is super important. And we don't talk enough about that. So check this out here, because before we get to the next segment, what I want to do here is I want to acknowledge that we have over 1,300 people in the room. And I want to get this close to 1,400. And we still only have 500 likes. So let's push this to 750 likes real quick, guys. That means if you're on your phone, close your chat real quick, hit the thumbs up button. Just hit the thumbs up really quickly. I know you yeah, yeah, literally just wait till I'm done talking and not do it, but just hit it for us real quick, guys, because again, that helps us spread the message and spread this out. And uh, what I want to do now, I'm going to let you get some super chats in before yeah. we go ahead and get on to the initiation hotline. I, 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 on, hotline I definitely want to get on that hotline because I just never seen this many men in the chat. Like they send the super chats over I'm and everything. I'm loving this. Yeah, this is dope. This is dope. This is what we need. We need everybody in the room on this. So shout out to uh shout out to SBU Live, by the way. Thank you, Ty and Ryan. Awesome platform and audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So SBU, listen, we love you. Thank we you. love you. Thank, Thank you. you. Shout out to Marcus Evans. He says, What up, SB? Hey, Keep Marcus. speaking that real spiel for our women. See, yeah, it is a thing where the men they really like what y'all are saying. Mm-hmm. They yeah. really like what y'all are saying. Yeah. I'm curious, ladies, if y'all, if y'all are 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 finding some level of of uh agreement and understanding from these women. I want y'all to put something in the chat. We're gonna put it in the chat. Put real, real, <laughs> real. R E A L. Because I don't, I don't. Because it's a Ladies. reason why men follow y'all. Yep. And it's a reason why not that many women do. Yeah. So I really want to see if they can still resignate with some of the things that you guys are sharing. Because we got almost fourteen hundred people in the chat. So somebody listen. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And go ahead, Ryan. Shout out to Kay Ann. She says, many smart women are emotionally empty. I'm trying to find a question here. Guys, we got a bunch of shout out to Kay Ann. Shout out to VJ. Shout out to Highly Favored. Shout yeah, out yeah, to yeah. uh Anasia Lay. She says, keep up the good work. Shout out to Kat Harlem. These are all our members. Like we love all of them. They just send love constantly. We love you. We guys. appreciate y'all. But what I want to try to do is get some questions. So I know y'all get a little bored from all of the statement chats. So let's get into the the call. Yes, guys. So because what I want to do is I want you guys to call in specifically about problems that you're having in your dating life. Okay, we're going to talk to SB as well as Anita. Okay, about these questions. So go ahead and go ahead and give us a call. Well, you're going to listen. Y'all come up here. We're going to be brief and brilliant tonight. y'all. I want a question. I want you to give me your age, your location and a question. I know y'all want to give me your testimony. I know you love us. I know you want to tell us about your life and what happened yesterday and what you ate for lunch. But just give us your question. So, Lionel, let me know. We got somebody on the phone. Okay. shout out to Generation Love and Ariel Taylor. Ariel, listen, I'm going to take care of you tonight. Ariel, we're going to ask this question because I think it's a good question. Mm. And shout out to Greg D and Nicole Davis, as well as John Sharrick. John, John Shout out to John. Yeah. All joining the YouTube membership. We appreciate y'all. All right, so we got that number up. So y'all go ahead and give that number. When and, and I'm excited. I think we're going to get a brother through tonight, man. I'm always yeah. excited when I hear the brothers come through, yep. the brothers ask us the questions, and the brothers get the game. It always makes me feel really, really good. And we don't have a call yet. So actually, until that happens, go ahead and read that question until we get our call in. Shout out to Ariel. She says, as a single woman that's seeking growth before being married, how do I meet a man that's on the same journey of growth? Hold on, wait. Hold on, wait. How about this? We got a call. You want to pause? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. We'll Let's go ahead we'll and take the call. We'll that's the that. question. We're coming back to it. Welcome to Hardly Initiated. Give me your, your age, your location, and your question. But you got to turn the you got to turn the show down in the back, my brother or sister. Yeah, you hear us? We, we, we hear you. With us? We hear you. Oh man, Lalo, call, let him call. go. Let him go. So let's get back to the question here. So pretty much, she's asking. She's seeking growth before she get married. How how does she find a good dude that's on the same page? Is that spiritual growth or? It's a good question. Say, but I would say put yourself in a position where 
this where you want to grow in, mm -hmm. whatever it is you want to grow in, mm -hmm. put yourself there. What's the priority growth? If trying to get to that next level, what part of growth should she be focused on first? She has to have a relationship with God. Spiritual growth. Yeah. What, yeah. what if she's just spiritual though? Then she would want to grow into that relationship. Mm. I'm not saying pick a religion, but she mm -hmm. still needs to read the books, learn how God loves, figure out what her purpose is as a woman, mm -hmm. as a wife. What should she be doing here? What does it mean to be a helpmate? What does her equivalent actually look like? Mm -hmm. That's what she's asking, right? Right. What should he possess? How will I see and know who he is if he approaches me? Correct? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So. so we got a call. It came in real quick. We're going to go ahead and take this one. Welcome to Harley Initiated. Give me your age, location, and your question. Oh, come on now. Don't tell me we got another fake one. Hello? Oh, I'm, am I on? Yes, you, you are, are brother. on. Brother, what's popping? Name, age, what's location, and question. It's Therese. it's Therese from Baltimore, 29. How y'all fellas doing? What up, T? What's popping? 29 years old, what's man. Up? So my question is, how do you know if it is worth staying if you've been in a situation, like I said before, for four and a half years, you're just getting into the place where you're really starting to get into your deep growth. Shout out to GS Youngblood on that last episode. I got the book already and I'm seven chapters in and it's helping immensely in five days. Excellent. But right, right now we're going back and forth. Like, honestly, I'm opening up and being more vulnerable. How do you know if it's really worth keeping going on, even though you are two incompatible people, but you're willing to fit the puzzle piece for each other? But there's just certain things where you might not always see eye to eye. Did you? I just want to make sure I heard that. Did you say you were in, an incompatible, two incompatible people? Um, at times, yes, because the situation is. The certain attitude that she brings to me at a certain time, just like G.S. Youngblood's book said, it brings up a certain trauma in me from childhood. But mm -hmm. now that I've got the book, I learned that I just have to stand more solid. And right. I'm accepting the fact that a lot of the times where I've been bothered throughout my relationship by essentially who she is, just from her trauma, is due to the fact that I've been dealing with my internal childhood trauma that I had no clue about. So it's led to some... Um, incompatibilities throughout this four and a half years and we're at the point now where we're just trying to figure out should we even keep it going because we both have said to each other if it doesn't get better from here like neither of us would want to keep it going but we're both willing to work okay so i'm gonna make a suggestion as a marital counselor um you want to set a timeline that's the first thing you want to sit down and you want to set a timeline and that timeline and the work you do within that timeline is going to determine if your relationship is going to continue. You need to be incredibly direct with each other in terms of um, your goals, what you, you know, if you have the ability to work together to heal your trauma. Couples have the ability to work together to help each other heal their trauma, but you have to want to do that. You have to want to say, hey, I have these triggers, I have these wounds, you have your triggers and wounds. I want us to work together to see if we can facilitate healing for each of us. And, and does she want to do that? But you're going to set a timeline. And whether that timeline's a month or three months or you know whatever that looks like. But if you don't see improvement in that period of time, there's a strong possibility that there is incompatibility. So about 75% of the couples that I see in my practice, they are incompatible. They should never have gotten together in the first place. That, you know, they don't like hearing that, but it's the truth. You know, a lot of us like pushing square pegs into round holes. And so, you know, it's not to say that your relationship can't flourish and grow and be saved, but I would put a timeline on it. And I would definitely, you know, read that book, apply what you're learning. I'm seeing too many people, they read the books that I recommend, but they don't apply it. You have to be willing to every day apply what's in that book. And then you're going to see, you're going to see what you have. Um, there's an equivalent, what's an equivalent to that? Okay, there's an equivalent to that book for her. It's called Getting to I Do by Dr. Pat Allen. That is what I would consider the, the female version of that, getting to I do. Um, she can read that. 
and she can again start applying what she's learning from that book. T, thank you so much for calling Appreciate in. It, can I add something to that really quick? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. We're gonna, we're gonna absolutely. Let go, let, we're yeah. going to let T go. Yes, did we want you, SB. Hold it down, T. But well, go ahead. Back. I wanted to add, married? No. No, he's not. He's dating. He's yes. dating. And do they live together? Oh. T, let us know in the chat if y'all live together. But they've been they've been dating for four years. Yeah. Okay. Wait, well, what, what you got? Oh, <laughs> well, if they are living together. And I, I want to know the difference between the two, by the way. That's that's good. Well, my suggestion would be if they are living together is to get out of the, dis the dysfunction. Um, cut off that sex. Oh. See, they're not being able to think clearly to what they have to actually do as far as healing. <laughs> because we're having sex and we're covering it up with... You know, every time we get into an argument with sex and which is fornication because we're not married. So we need to cut off the dysfunction so we can actually see what God wants us to do. Mm -hmm. And all these things will make sense because they'll be blessed if they're doing it the right way. Makes sense. If they're holding their blessings up. Honestly, that's my, I, wow. didn't, didn't my man say sexual healing? That, that yeah. ain't that anything? That's what you're I talking about. I got the yeah. feeling. <laughs> I think that's, that's a big part of it. So really, okay. so he needs, so if they're living together, mm. they need to cut the sex off as a part of trying to figure out what is happening with them. Right. And I mean, I would imagine that that's probably what you would recommend to most couples who are single and having issues about where they want to go with their relationship. Absolutely. After four years, because yeah. you're, you're going to have problems in any type of relationship. Right, right. So what's the big deal? Yeah. So if I'm not seeing something clearly, the only th I got to clear my head, stop the sex because we're fornicating. So let's make it right. Stop the dysfunction. Now let's do it the right way. Even if he has to live in a different environment for a time or just going to get married and you will see a difference. Mm. Wow. And, and Ty, I want you to be clear because we want to take another caller real quick, but yeah. I want you to be clear about what you want him to call in about. Um, that's a good question. Um, let's think about that because here, what we're talking about is let's, let's go ahead and talk specifically about anybody who's having specific issues vetting someone for marriage i like staying on that i, I like staying in that in, in in the area of vetting for marriage you have a partner or a problem in a relationship that's not quite making it to the altar and you want to call in specifically about that <laughs> yeah. relationship that you are currently in and okay? just a quick side note on the on the super chat guys guys if you ask a question, me and Tyshawn are going to read that question on air. You got to make sure that the question or the super chat is at $10 or above. Now, this is the thing. If y'all send a bunch of super chats with statements, of course, we appreciate them. But if I go through and read 10 statements with no question, y'all going to go ahead and log off and go to sleep in the end of y'all night. So to make the show as engaging as possible, make sure that you send over questions at that $10 or above mark so we can read them and keep the show rolling. When we got somebody on here, give me your age, your location, as well as your question. Tammy, Monroe, Louisiana. And my age is 54. Just had a birthday two weeks ago. Question is. Happy belated. So, thank you. So, I was dating this guy off and on for a few years. And we were going in separate directions. So, I decided that, you know what, this is not good for me. And so I cut it off. It's been a year now. And after a year, and he's moved out, has his own camp, and I'm a single parent. And now it's like he's trying to do the things that I asked him to do when we were together. But he's in a different, uh, in his own place. So my question is, how do I know that he's seriously trying to make it work? Or is it just a convenience factor that he can come and go? as he pleases because he has his own place now. It's like he wants me, He it's like he doesn't want a relationship, but he wants to keep me occupied enough so that nobody else is interested. So Ms. Tammy, you have to elevate yourself. You have to set standards and you can't deviate from them. So whatever it is you want, you have to put that in place. Don't keep relaxing your your standards because he's familiar to you or with you. Mm -hmm. Elevate, mm -hmm. want more, because if not, you're gonna gonna get what he's he knows who you are. So he's only gonna give you the minimal amount to keep you happy. So if you definitely want something different, elevate yourself, set your standards, and just stay right there. You will see a big difference, and you may even meet another man that's better for you. Thank you all so much. Ty and Sean, I love your show. I'm on every week. We love you. And 
Put your book in the chat again, Miss SB. My oh, I don't have a book. I think was that your book? Oh, um, choose well. If you're single, you are you yeah. choose well. A simple formula to determine the best man for you. It's going to give you the blueprint on how to choose a really great man. Most of us are not taught that. Thank you all so much. Yep. We Boom. appreciate it. Tammy. Tammy. I love Miss Tammy. So hold yeah. on. Before we get to another uh, another call here, I actually want to ask a question because, okay. um, yeah, well, yes, I want to ask Tammy. She's still, on the, she's still on the show. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to let you go, Tammy. Tammy. We're yeah, we're going to let you go. <laughs> okay. All right. Later, Tammy. Later, Tammy. So, Tammy. All right. Because I think this is a really, really, really good conversation. Yeah, we're going to come back to the calls. I'm going to come back to the calls. Let's hold off on that real quick. But when it comes to, you talked about standards and you talked about settling. I want to actually talk about what settling is. Yes. Because I hear that a lot. I hear people say, I don't want to settle. Right. Let's actually talk about what you got. What do you guys think it means to settle? They literally say I'm single because I chose not to settle. Yes. Okay. I don't believe that people can settle. I think what you are demonstrating, the things you are putting out, you are receiving exactly what you deserve at that particular time. Mm. In order to get better, you have to elevate yourself, set different standards, and then you'll get a better companion or a better man. You'll get something better. But as far as selling, I don't believe in that. I think this is what you can attract at that particular time. Wow. Now that's a, yeah, that's a gut punch. Right so, you, so you pretty much, wherever you at, you deserve this. <laughs> You ain't settling for nothing. This is who you is right now. That, that's that's what I think. If you want better, you'll elevate and then better will come. Mm -hmm. But if you're here at this space and these men are coming to you and they all seem to look alike and they all seem to act alike and they all, and, and that's all that's coming, then that's what you are putting out there. That's what that's your projection. That's it. So wow. this, so it's not a real thing if they just sitting back waiting for the for the right man or the one to come to come around. What that is is delusion that makes them think that they're thinking that they're the prize right now and that there's no work that needs to be done. And I'm mm. going to dictate the relationship, which we already said me, women do not dictate relationship. Yeah. They're forgetting that they have to attract this man. Mm -hmm. They can't just sit back and be like, I got this, I got this and I got that. And this man is supposed to come and, and recognize that they have all these things because men don't want that from us. Mm. You get what I'm saying? I get what you're saying. Men want certain things from us. And those are the things we need to elevate ourselves in. So they can be more attracted to us, but we just not getting it. We think it's the money. Mm -hmm. We think it's uh, the education. Mm -hmm. We it's all these things that men say they don't care anything about. Nope. So Anita, what what are, what are men communicating that they want? Nope. They want uh, affection. Mm -hmm. They want your smile. They want your attention and your time. Um, they want uh, care and compassion. They want um, inspiration. Um, they want to be accceptед. Oh, I hear that so appreciated. often. Yes, mm -hmm. accepted and appreciated. They want they, you to rub their bald heads. Yes. Oh my god. Yes. Is that one? Is that true? I love. Oh my god. Oh. That's like a. That's like a major key right there. <laughs> Sometimes I'll be having yeah. a oh my god, a woman that just knows to rub my ball. I'll be yeah. I would love it and just be kind of weary. Like, where you learn this from? <laughs> they they want to rub my head boots. like this, girl. They want you to take off their boots when yep. they come in the house. So that's, that's it. Oh that's my god. Mm. But see, sometimes a woman will feel like I think today a woman might look at that as putting themselves in a position that is subservient in the relationship. Mm -hmm like putting themselves in a dangerous position in a relationship by doing those things. Like though those things are like almost like less than like that might be old. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like we don't do that no more. Like, mm. do you still think it's cause I'm going to be honest. I've never had a woman take my shoes off. Now here's the thing. I'm, I ain't married. So <laughs> is that it? Like, let's talk. You know what? I'm, I'm developing my question as I, as I walk through this here, because as a man who's single, I value seeing women do wifely Absolutely. things Did hear that? for me to be able to determine <laughs> that this is a woman that should do, deserves wifeship Absolutely. because I can't imagine. I know people say, you know, you ain't married. You don't deserve this. And I can't imagine marrying a woman all of a sudden a switch. As soon as we right. say our vows, a switch pops up. Right. 
And all of a sudden, she's cooking, cleaning, taking off boots and rubbing ball heads. Yeah. Mm. And she's never showed any, any indicate, indicator that she can do this in the past. Right. So what is the, what is like that balance between not giving it all away, yeah. right? Showing that you are capable of these wifely duties, yet not necessarily, like they say, what is it? Giving away the cow, mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. What's that balance? Well, if we honestly saying that we like roles, then that roles would be the, the husband is first, mm -hmm. the wife comes up below him, and then the children, right? So we're in our gender roles. We operate the same way. So when we get married, my husband and I become one. Mm -hmm. That's all about sacrifice. It's all about selflessness. So why wouldn't I give all to my husband? I'm submitting everything to him. Why wouldn't I do that? Because he's actually submitting to me also. So this is the person you give all to. You sleep with several different people and you're giving and submitting to them. Why not give it all to your man, your husband? So why not do that? Oh, so, so, so sex, you're saying is an act of submission. I think I missed that. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> one up, yeah. But see, what, so, what I guess I was more so speaking for the single, like for the people that's in that, in the single dating portion before they get to marriage. How can they show you? Like, yeah, like exactly. Mm -hmm. They can only... They really can't. They can only show you or tell you that I'm an adult woman and I want to be a wife. And they would operate in that realm. They would be cooking meals. You still cook. You still can cook your boyfriend a meal if it's mm -hmm. only one time a week. Mm -hmm. You would still have a clean house. Right. One yep. red flag. Look in her trunk of her car. Yep. If it's messy, not a wife. Yep. Wow. Not a wife. So things like that you look for yep. because, you know, we don't want to set up. We don't want that person you know, that does it to get you. And then soon as she got you, you yeah. know, all this hell breaks loose and yep. everything's messy. She doesn't cook anymore. She don't mm -hmm. want, you know, let's cater this, let's do this, let's do that. You don't want that. You want that right. real woman that really wants to be a wife and does it, you know, it's no big deal to service her husband. That's the person you should be servicing. Right. You're supposed to be in a hundred percent, but I guess a woman would actually talk to you and tell you her intentions. These are my intentions. And this is what it looks like. I want to be a wife. This is what I would do for my husband and all she can do the most. I'm not washing your clothes as a single woman. I'm not doing that, but mm -hmm. I am washing my own. Yeah. I am keeping my house clean. Mm -hmm. I am keeping my car clean. I am paying my bills. Mm -hmm. You know, the bill collector's not calling me. I'm not going into bad debts mm -hmm. that I will share with you. Right. Because I'm intending on being married and I want you to know that this is the kind of person that I am. Right. Mm, I'm wow. dressing appropriately. You know, wow. you ain't got to worry about me drinking a beer. Yep. You know, me and you going to the strip joint together. Right. Right. Mm. Those type things. You ain't got to worry about that. I'm not yep. doing that. And you'll just pick up on the rest. Now, right. she may not know everything, though. Still understand that. But she may be willing mm -hmm. because now I have a husband. I am willing to do these things because I do want to make sure that we are both satisfied within this marriage. Wow. And I didn't say happy. Okay. Oh my goodness. We gotta talk about marriage in a minute. We got and we gotta talk about okay. I'm so, I wanna hold on with that happy though. No, that happy. Satisfied. Okay, let's yeah. talk about the happy. All right. Because <laughs> everybody on Harley Initiated know how how worried Tyshawn is about women who wanna be happy. Mm -hmm. And that just sounds so weird. <laughs> because what you mean, Ty, you want an unhappy woman? No, but I don't want a woman who becomes unhappy and files for divorce. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to figure out is what is the goal? If it's not happy, what is it? Satisfied. Right. And what, what's the difference? Joy. Uh, happiness is uh, you brought her a gift and she feels good. Happy is you went and got her car clean. She feels good today. Everything's good. Mm -hmm. That's happy. Satisfied is I got a good man. Right. He covers me. He protects me. He comes home. He's offered me stability and security. I am good. Mm. I'm a grow in this. You know, he's the head servant of my house. The man is actually the her, the head servant because he's the mm -hmm. one that goes out and has the plan and makes the money and bring it in. Yep. So I don't know how I could be the servient, the most servient one in the home, mm -hmm. seeing that my husband is the one that goes out and does all that. But see, I'm a one pot person too. So whatever I get goes into one pot along with my husband's anyway. So there's, there's, there's a trust thing that goes along with all this, which I'm willing to take that plunge and say, okay, let's do this. There's a whole lot of things that you have to do to make a marriage satisfying mm -hmm. not necessarily happy mm. right. happiness just comes and goes y'all women right. we are emotional yeah. on a rainy day i may be sad yep and you couldn't have it my husband would be like what's wrong I ain't nothing you know? <laughs> and you, 
you know. So just like this young lady, uh, Samantha, she was having a bad day. Mm. She ruined her marriage on a bad day. Yep. She said, "How many? How many weeks later? Mm-hmm. A couple a month later? Yeah, not even yeah. that long." And she she said she felt waited. fine. You know, mm-hmm. I felt better about the situation. Yep, yep. And think about it like this: like I'm a big believer in the science of relationships. That's what I've studied for the last twenty years. I'm really into the science of relationship. And when we are looking at clinical studies, we are looking at marital satisfaction. Mm-hmm. We're not looking at happy. That's what we're trying to define, marital satisfaction. So yes, that's a real thing. Happy is going to come and go. Your feelings are going to wax and wane, and that's okay. I've been a mother for 23 years. I hate my kids right now, Mm. but that is today, (laughs) right? okay? Yesterday, I was deeply in love with them. You know, every day is different. Mm. And I wish women had that same patience that they have with their children, with their man. Mm. Right now, my children, they're the longest relationship I've been in, except for my mother and father. Like, I've been rocking with them for 23 years, come hell or high water. And sometimes I tell women, like, I want you to have that same, that same stick to itiveness with your man. <laughs> you know, you're going to put up with a lot of stuff from your kid. You're going to put up with some stuff from your man. You know, I, I wished you had that same level of patience or just being willing to stick it out. Because, yeah, both of them are, they're interesting. Marriage is interesting. Raising kids is interesting. So, But you know what? The husband is also putting up with things from that woman. Oh, for sure. And that's the part we never see. (laughs) For sure. Mm. Men don't talk about that, really. Mm -hmm. That that doesn't come to the forefront. Mm -hmm. It's always what the man has done, not necessarily what the woman has done. Mm -hmm. So. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. This sound like one of them sessions where, like, if a woman had like some keep it real aunties, yeah, when she asked them a question, yeah. and they'd be like, "Girl, girl, sit your girl, sit your ass yeah. down. Let me talk to you. <laughs> yeah. let, let, let me talk to you." That's what this is here. That's what we doing hardly initiated. All right. So it's not like not enough of that is happening in the household in general. On both not, ends, for the young both. men, absolutely, and for the young ladies, and thus we have chaos. Yeah. yeah. Thus we have chaos. So, man. Ryan, first of all, I've been asking. I was like, Ryan, ask a question. I don't, I don't even want. I've been. I've been going crazy. I don't even want to hog well, up. I don't even want to hog up and no, soak up good. all the game right you, now. You good? I wanted to um talk about the you know what actually comes with marriage, right? Versus what people expect that come. What, what they think actually comes with marriage. So SB, I'll start with you. What would you think? What would you say is the number one thing? that before people get married or the number one thing that people expect to come out of a marriage that actually is the complete opposite story once they actually get married. That you're going to love your husband every day, that you're going to be in a fairy tale love situation all the time, where it's going to be, you know, sugar and spice, everything mm-hmm. nice. We just cut in every, everybody's all affectionate and all, all the time. That's not going to happen. Another thing too, is something, um, I talked to someone about today, Uh, women, we have kind of been programmed to think that men are like robots Mm. and y'all don't really feel a Mm. lot. Um, When you get into a marriage, you realize that your husband is real. He's maybe been through some things. He has real feelings also, and you just can't do what you want. You know, you have to take in consideration who he is as a man, um, his feelings, you know, all those things. And I think women, going into marriages we don't be thinking about that we it's just gonna be about us even yeah. to the wedding yeah it's about us we'll even say that you know the wedding is for the woman you know we'll say things like that and i think going in we don't think that we have to care for our husbands as much as we do mm-hmm. wow. wow that's that's actually very sad that that's what you think it is that women literally going into these marriages don't think they have to play they play their role yeah. Well, I don't think we see it as a role. No, we play our, play our role as far as cooking and cleaning and the household stuff. I'm talking about caring for his his mental, his mm. him going to work, whatever he has to do on the outside of the house. Mm-hmm. You know, who hurt you today? Mm-hmm. Who um, disrespected you today, husband? How was your day for real? What were mm. your thoughts today? Mm-hmm. You know, we just expect men to be quiet. You know, I. Okay, so this past weekend, I was around a, a lot of men, you know, my age, and um, quite a few of them were married, like mm-hmm. between this two and five year marriage. And um, I was just talking about because because we had GS Youngblood on the show, I'm talking mm-hmm. about these um, embodiment practices. Mm-hmm. And I was just telling people about something that recently happened with me where I was out and a young lady out of nowhere 
really crazy, comes up to me and she just flat out cusses me out, starts accusing me of all kind of crazy stuff, right? Turns out, like, I mean, the stuff that she was saying, I told Tyshawn off camera, it was ridiculous. Yeah. But she literally had a moment where she thought I was somebody else. Mm. Crazy, ridiculous, yeah. right? So as I was telling my, you know, told this story a couple times over the weekend, a few guys, four guys actually, two at the first place I was at, two at the second place, actually told me that they, within the past two to three months, have had panic attacks mm. or anxiety attacks. Mm. And I was blown away by this. Yeah. And I was more so blown away, not by the fact that they had the attacks, but in how they was like, oh, you, oh, oh that happened to you? Let me tell you about this. Like, it was like they were eager, yeah. like, yeah. just, and they wanted to sit me down and explain what happened. One of them actually passed out in the grocery store mm. on his friend. His friend just happened to catch him. Mm. The other one literally passed out at work. He said he was he was unable to work for an entire week. Yeah. And I had never heard of that before, especially a man having that. Mm -hmm. But I will say these guys are married. Yeah. So me, I'm just very critical. So yeah. the first thing I thought was, I, in my, I didn't say this, mm -hmm. but in my mind, I was thinking like, damn, like, ain't that your wife's job? Like, isn't it your wife's job yeah. to make sure you're not acting a nut yeah. at work yeah. and passing out going grocery shopping right you know and i didn't ask this but i really wanted to so is that would you is that part of the woman's job to make sure that you know her man is in mental shape to be attacking the world absolutely oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. he has to be able to deprogram something mm -hmm. somewhere you know, he has to be able to feel vulnerable at some point in time. I know right. that men have usually been taught that it's not cool to be vulnerable, but you see how it, how much it's stressing. Yeah, these are dudes. I, these and are they're dudes. Young. I can say, yeah, they, you know, anywhere between like thirty-two and like thirty-six. Yeah. Yeah. That's. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Something I have learned mm -hmm. that it's very difficult to be a man. I'm not a man. Yeah. I'm not trying to take that position. I'm just saying the role when I see it laid out or the expectation. That's a hard job. If done correctly, mm -hmm. very hard job. So mm. women need to care for their husbands. I protect my husband. I absolutely do. I'll, he's probably the only person I would fight for. Yeah. <laughs> well, what, is, mean, what does that look like, though? Just so I can really get some some practical understanding to that, because I think we hear that a lot. Of, a lot. But what does it look like for a woman to really be able to make sure that her man is, you know, able to be vulnerable with with her? Like, how, how how does how does she really create that space practically? Mm -hmm. Like, is it certain conversations she's having? Do they have a block of time regularly regularly that they don't miss? Is it some? Is it a time where a woman might you know say you know pa pass off something that he may have said vulnerably and not realizing and he kind of shuts down? Like, what does it really look like to intentionally create that space so you can have that level of honesty and openness so the brothers are not in that position yeah i've been married so long um my husband and i are pretty much on one accord so he may say something and i might hear the things that he's not saying right and i'll ask him about it you know what i mean by that like he yeah may, he'll say the top part but i'll hear what he didn't say i'll hear oh so you didn't you don't feel good mm -hmm. he may be like i'm doing all right mm -hmm. but i actually heard i don't feel good right mm. so i'll stop him and be like hey babe what's wrong you know how was your day today what what went on and then it'll lead another place. And mm -hmm. since we have been together for so long, we have that amount of trust that he knows that I'm, I would never use it against him. Or, you know, he knows that. But that's relationship. We, we, I always do relationship. I'm, I'm big on relationship. I want to be successful at relationship. And I know in our community, we don't do relationship well. Mm. Mm. So I'm always looking for and asking God for guidance to have relationship. So whatever I need to say to my husband, I'm hoping that God used me at that moment to say those right things. So yeah. we can get all everything off for him. He can be um, comfortable to let it all go so he doesn't have to be in the grocery store. I like that. It's like yeah. you you a, a doctor, really. Yeah. And you diagnosing what, right. what your husband or, or significant other is not really saying. That's it, not intuition, man. It, it reminds me of my right. mom because, like, I remember, you know, because we work, me and Tyshawn, we work like dogs. So <laughs> I remember I'm like, yo, I'm going to stop by my mom's spot, you know, and holler at her for a little bit. And I was I was really sick. I was, like, mm -hmm. sick as hell. Mm -hmm. And mom was like, you good? I'm like, no, nah, I'm straight. You know, I kept saying I'm straight. I'm straight. Mm -hmm. And it just, she just kept doing stuff. Like, hey, just sit down for a second. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, you know, I, I sit down. <laughs> you know, next thing you know, it's a blanket on me. Next thing you know, I got some tea. <laughs> yeah. And next thing you know, I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I am sick, mm -hmm. but I still wanted to work. So I'm still on my laptop. My mom was like, hey, you know, it's okay. And I'm like, it's okay.
<laughs> like yeah. I was almost like yeah. wanting her approval that it was okay for me to chill yep. and actually sit down. And she's like, "Yeah, why don't you go ahead, go ahead and text our show and tell him you you gonna you gonna be there a little later." I'm like, oh, "Okay, <laughs> you know." <laughs> but if I was not in that environment, right. I, who knows? I would have worked myself to the bare bone. Yeah. Yeah. So it almost so I would you know and when I think about the woman that I would want, mm -hmm. I would want. To it's kind of, is, is that weird? I would want to get my woman's permission that it's okay for me to take a day. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, if it's left up to me, I'm going to work until I pass out. Right. <laughs> or until, you know, there's no more left. Yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with it um, because you have taken up on that, that role as husband to be mm -hmm. the head of it. So you have to function every day. You can't take mm -hmm. a break from that. If you do, things might fall apart. Right. So you she has to cover you at that moment. Right. To say, okay, take a break. I got this, mm. you know. And then she can she can um, man that ship while you're down. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean by protection. She still has to be in that role to protect her husband. She, your mom knew. Your wife needs to know also. Right. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Right. There's man, a, listen. Shout out the first of all. I'm sorry. Shout out to Pastor James in the chat. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure everybody goes ahead and hit that like button real quick. We at 795. Get us to a thousand as we are close approaching 1600 people in here so go ahead and get us to a thousand likes real quick everybody hit that like button but yeah. go ahead so there's a level of emotional safety that a woman should provide um and that is basically going to look like again the acceptance um men want to be accepted and a lot of men don't feel accepted you know they don't feel like they can be vulnerable or even be their authentic self and so to come mm -hmm. to your woman and say, hey, I'm having some mental health struggles or I'm having panic, I'm having anxiety. Uh, my son was suffering from anxiety. And I remember that he, he showed up for breakfast one morning. I think he was like 16. Uh, and he described an episode he had in the middle of the night. And it's like a night terror. So you have this night terror. And in the middle of it, you can't move. Like you can't get up, you can't move, you can't speak. So I was very familiar with what he was talking about. And I said, son, you know, I want you to keep me abreast of things like this. You know, it happens. It happens, you know, to everybody where they have these challenges. I said, but keep me abreast of what's going on because the last thing I ever want you to feel is alone in this. You're never alone in whatever it is you're going through. Your woman should make you feel that way. You should never feel alone in your financial struggles, alone in your emotional struggles, alone in your mental health struggles. That's a no-no. You should not, that's not a relationship you need to be in. Yeah. If you feel alone and you're with your woman, that's mm. a problem. Yeah. Wow. That's true. Man, first of all, let me tell y'all ladies, y'all ladies are doing an amazing job so far. Just by the chat, I'm seeing the messages in here. First of all, if you are getting some game right now from these two ladies, I want to see, I want to see you drop game in the chat right now. As a matter of fact, let's fire back up the initiation hotline real quick. Okay, Lano. And I know when right. the hotline play. So what I want y'all to do is we're going to actually open up the phone lines again. And I kind of paused it prior, but I want to keep it where it was last time. I want people specifically with problems that they're having with an active partner that they're dating and having trouble vetting and understanding whether or not this is somebody they need to be taken to the altar all right so i want some i want you to call in specifically for that reason and we went ahead and we put the number up so you guys can call in you guys yeah. are going to give us your age your location and get straight to the question family because these issues they they're not really uh relegated to, to one age group like well, it's i mean everybody's having these same running. exact issues no it is and i think it's a lot of women specifically who and you know what men too that have given up and they pretty much just like you know what i'm i'm out i'm out the game and i think women specifically because that's who we most communicate with they say the same thing they say i don't have time see and, that's and, the biggest thing in the purpose and power of marriage it actually addresses this that's actually how the book starts it talked about how Family is pretty much just the foundation of society. Right. Mm -hmm. And marriage is typically the foundation and the cornerstone of family. Mm -hmm. So when you when typically anybody playing chess, the enemy is going to create confusion yep. and he's going to create disdain in marriage. That's why men feel this way about marriage. Women feel this way about marriage. That's a ploy to destroy the family, guys. And right now, everybody's falling for it. Because if you just hear the general consensus about where we are, 
men do not want to get married. Women do not want to get married. And the, the, the reality is if you think about a nation of people who all rebel against marriage, yep. that is literally a nation that has just literally gone into chaos I want to bring mm-hmm. because now mm-hmm. the family is destroyed the That's community it. is destroyed at that point it's just literally yeah. a, it's a countdown to the day that this is over with yeah. so i mean you really have to we really have to combat that narrative that is not possible to build a marriage but again we got to make sure we put ourselves in environments where people are pro figuring this ish out like we are here tonight on Harley Initiated with the ladies on here. And do we have somebody on? Uh, we actually do. Welcome to Harley Initiated Live. Give me your age, your location, and your question. Hello, good day. My age is 40, and I'm using an alias. We've got by Nicole. Oh, wow. um, I, but I've been celibate for more than six years. I know you all had that conversation before. And I bring it up because um, the last person I was with was, a, was my ex-husband. And then I dated someone and that became an issue um, of my celibacy journey. And so I did like succumb because we had like high chemistry. Mm-hmm. And it went from him being the chaser, chasing me, dating, et cetera, et cetera. And now it's a lot. The tables have turned. Mm-hmm. Um as a lady speak, I have to pull back my energy because acts of service is my love language. So my question is, um, what should I do when I feel connected? I don't know if it's just a connection because of having, you know, broken such a major vow with my face with God, or if it's actually because I felt such a strong connection to this gentleman, but now I feel like I'm pulled out of my feminine energy because I went from being, you know, chased to now the pursuer, which is completely out of my character. So what say you all? <laughs> I like that. What say you? Okay. So what say I'm, you? I'm going to suggest, number one, that you go on attachmentproject.com and you're going to take the attachment style quiz. You're going to find okay. out what your attachment style is. That's the okay. first thing. Because if you are more of an anxious attacher, this is a very natural role for you to be in. So now I used to run like Samantha Lee. I used to be a runner before him. Mm, mm. Mm. Okay. So, and you could be a fearful avoidant. So that's a blend of avoidant and anxious. You could be more on that fearful avoidant side. Um, but there's some, there's something there that needs to be healed. Something okay. has to be healed. Um, the second thing I would encourage you to do is, is simply just to energetically pull back. Um, you all can still go out. I would still be affectionate. I would still be fun and flirty. I wouldn't sleep with him anymore, but I would kind of. Yes, get because it. there are definitely things I want to do to him. Yeah. Lot, lots of things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got that chemistry. Yeah, okay. I would pull back a little. Um, and that's what I always tell women. There are ways to show your affection without having sex. What is that, by the way? Just affection without erection. Yeah. That's what you're saying. That's it. You're, and, and remember, you're looking for a connection. we global. Right. You're looking for a connection. So it's not just sexual. It's emotional. It's mental. It's, you know, you can have physical affection without having sex. So that's what you're looking to develop is that connection um, outside of the bedroom. You know, I tend to treat men like for Are the car. The yeah. car. Yeah. It's Being outside. Men. Lots of places. Yeah. Oh, no, wait. And by the yeah. way, Nicole, Nicole was your alias, right? Mm-hmm. That's my alias, yes, where, and I'm sticking to it. Here? Well, for tonight's purpose, we'll say I'm from um, Australia. <laughs> well, not really. I'm from the South, actually. From the South. Wait, is this a, hold on, hold on. Is this a real accent? No. Uh, well, I picked it up from good time. I, I, I can't give too much, but I, I do use a lot of different dialects, you know? So. Okay. No, it's not real. Oh, no, it's not oh, real. Wow. <laughs> hey, listen, Nicole. Well, listen, you, you go ahead, enjoy your night. I appreciate your question, okay? Can I add something? Thank you. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Please Bye-bye. proceed. No, no, no. Go Bye. Ahead. Thank <laughs> you. No, we can take, we can take okay. the answer outside of the call, okay? Enjoy your night. Okay, bye. Thank you all. Blessings. Bye. Blessings. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. <laughs> I thought she was Ricky Smiley calling the bitch. Shout out to Nephew Tommy. Hey, shout out to Ashley. Shout out to the Australian followers out here. But go ahead. 
I just want to add to what Nicole was saying. Um, she did say her ex. Uh, I think as women, we need to self-reflect. She needs to figure out and take accountability for why that relationship didn't work. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think she's bringing something to the new relationship that she didn't fix from the last. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And now she's running him away also. Did you all pick that up? Yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah she needs to self-reflect and figure out what it is. It's, um, the servitude is good, but there's something else there. Mm -hmm. It may be a little bit of control. Mm -hmm. Control. Yeah. yeah. And that's anxious attachers. That's what they do. They want to control the relationship. They want to control everything because that's what gives them the self, the soothing. They feel soothed when they're in control. So, yeah. Now, how might this woman present herself? It, the, the one that's looking for is the manipulation that she's using to control the person. Well, she says her love language is service. She's right. doing everything. Mm -hmm. oh. so she's calling all the shots. Right. She was being pursued now right. she's the has to pursue her right. so he's kind of pushing her away but who pushes away a good meal you know so he's like getting the best of both you know what i'm saying he's mm -hmm. getting the best of both worlds he's still allowing her to be herself but she needs to fix that she doesn't need to be controlling to a man wow mm. she, needs well, to, she needs to be self reflect we got somebody up on here welcome to hardly initiated live give me your age your location and your question 33 new york and it's nikki can you hear me okay? I sure can. can. What's, What's up, up Nikki? Nikki? Hi. Good Hi. to uh, be back on here. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, I'm loving the live. So I have a question. I actually have two questions if it's helpful. You better pick um, the best one. one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fine. Well, okay. So then, hmm. Go ahead. The, Go ahead. Okay. How can I discern whether or not um, I'm experiencing a fear of commitment based on like, Past trauma, because I've done the work to overcome it. How can I discern whether or not, um, yeah, I, I just have a fear of commitment or whether or not this person may or may not be the person for me? I, I tend to end up in courtship quite consistently. Yeah. And I'm just like, am I scared to be married? <laughs> mm. So that's, that's question number one. And then the second question is another thing for me is how long do you recommend a woman uh, be in courtship? Like, I have gone maybe five months and that's usually when like sexual frustration and things come up because I'm not doing certain things. Um, so how long would you recommend it take for someone to discern whether or not someone is an ideal partner? Thank you. Thank you. Great questions, Nikki. We'll answer for you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'd right, be blessed. All right, ladies. My short answer is 12 months. I don't ever encourage anyone make a lifelong commitment until they've known someone 12 months. Four seasons. You mean and you're saying the minimum that that's, that's the minimum. Okay. Is Twelve months. Four seasons. In four seasons, someone's going to die. Someone's going to lose a job. Someone's going to get sick. Someone's going to fall out with a friend. Someone's going. Someone's child is going to act up. Like your that relationship's going to go through some stress, and you need that to happen so you can see who that person is. So I say twelve months. Um, I think most people can can go without sex for 12 months. I've gone much longer than that. Um, but at least 12 months, four seasons should go by before you commit the, in that serious manner, which is take a person's ring, get married, et cetera. Hmm. Mm. What do you think, SB? I think if you all have the same foundation, the same principles, standards, and values, six months is enough. Can you, th you think you can uh, discover all of that if you have all those in common after oh, yeah. six months? Within six months, you can just figure out if you have the same standards, foundation. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. You can. They would have to, I mean, first of all, y'all would have to be pretty intentional. Yeah. Yeah. And like, like, both people got to be yep. looking for marriage, I Absolutely. think, at that point. Yeah. My husband, I listen, I always use this as an example, but we used to talk like all night. So, like, one week was almost like a month. Does that make sense? Yeah. Of just letting it all out, just telling everything going over all the things in our life. We just told it all. And it's like all night talking constantly. We just talk, talk, talk. And then it's almost like we were together, years, but we were only together six months. But if a guy wants to continue past that six months or a year mm -hmm. mark, I mean, and he wants to go two, three years, I mean, is that all right? Mm -hmm. How many? Two, three? Two max. Two yeah. max. I always say two also, yeah. Wow. Anything beyond you that. Two months. We, two we don't years. have the same principles yeah. and foundation yeah. if you need to two go years. beyond two months. I mean, yeah. two years. I'm sorry. Yeah. 
Mm. There's something there. So, right. I mean, you you got men that you that you communicate with regularly, right? Are these men do they not communicate that sometimes the wife or the significant other they switch switch it up on them after a couple years? Um, yeah, but see, I don't file for that. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that red flag was, it was there before. Also, oh. you just had your eyes on the wrong thing. Right? Oh wow! So I don't I don't fall yeah, for that. So neither. listen, yeah. elevate yourself. You have to, you know, be honest. This is a real thing. It can't all be attraction, right? You know, cut the sex out. Go in this with a clear head. Look at the woman again. Do you still see the same thing? Right. No, I see something different now. Okay, exactly. then that's probably what's real. You know, so that's you have it. to have that's a clear mind about this. But to go back to um, Nikki's other question about commitment, Nikki, you will not know. You just got to take a chance. There's yeah. no guarantees in life. That's it. It's and that's the only way you're going to know if you're going to be healed or not. Right. That you are healed is to take a chance. Mm. I said it's a risk. You got to put that healing to the test, girl. Yeah. Roll the dice. Nikki, you receiving that? <laughs> That's what you gotta oh, do. Come on. There's no, All right. no other. Nikki, way. we appreciate you. We appreciate you. And we got this the last call that we're gonna take care for the initiation hotline. Welcome to Hardly Initiated Live. Give me your age, location, and your question. Um, hello. Um, I'm 29 and I currently live in Las Vegas. Um, my question is I am dating a guy who's 42. Um, we're long distance because we used to um be together and then we kind of broke up and now he's really wanting to basically get get back together and get engaged and get married but i i have reservations because i feel like whatever reason that he left the the first time and now he's coming back i feel like he should um, he's going to have to do more than what he originally did when, when we first were connected, because I feel like um, when when we departed and it was his decision, it really kind of broke my trust and feeling like we could actually build something the second time. Mm -hmm. Should I keep trying to allow myself to pursue and um, grow the feelings again to move into engagement and marriage or because it did not work out the first time around, I should just let it go. You absolutely want to self reflect. Mm. You want to look at that past relationship and figure out if you had any part in it being a not good situation. Mm -hmm. If anytime you played a role in that, you want to say, okay, I did do this. This could have been a turnoff to him or whatever it was. But if you remember, if you are blameless in the situation, do not go back. Keep moving. No, I, I, I did have, um, I did play a role in some things, but w what he kind of tells me is that he did not, he, he had feelings, like he said to himself, like he was like, okay, I could marry her, we could be, we could be together, but he said that he was not ready then, mm. and him pulling back really made me do a lot of self reflecting, and I changed a lot about myself. And I'm not sure if I am, because I'm not the same person I was when we were first connected, I don't know if I could give myself to him in the level that I did that first time around. Because because I'm a changed person and I feel like my, my needs are, and wants are more focused and I'm, I, I, I don't know, but but I have done a lot of self reflection, but I don't really know how to communicate that to him, other than he's saying like whatever whatever we need, he's willing to do. So I'm like, well, maybe we could. I I proposed to him that we could do three to six months of premarital counseling, and if that if we can see it through the end of that, then I would be willing to move forward um, with an engagement. Mm -hmm. Do y'all remember earlier in the show I said that when a woman tells a man what she wants, that he'll do it? Yeah. This is what he's willing to do. Mm. She told him what he want, what she mm. wanted, and he's willing to do it, but it's not really him. He's just wanting to get her back into the same situation that she was in. Mm. He has to be that man that you want him to be naturally or on his own. You can't build him. You can't, yes, you know, you can't do that. So continue to elevate and maybe and I think you will definitely attract someone else that is more um, suitable for who you are at this time. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Thank you so much. Listen, thank you so much for that call and that question. Okay, you be blessed. Take that and do something with it, please. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Blessings to you. So, SB, when you when you mentioned elevate, by what it what it. I don't know exactly what she's doing, but she said that some of the things that she wanted, he wasn't willing to do. Yeah. She didn't say what they were, but keep keep on that elevation. You want to be the best version of yourself. So right. what it, if, if, even if it's going to the gym five times a week, mm. if he's a type of person that doesn't want to go to the gym, that's not mm. going to be the person you want to be with. Mm. You know, just any type of way that she's uh, things that she's saying she wants to be the best version of herself. She needs to elevate her thought process right. and don't settle per se, or disaccept or have them right. take you off of your, um, of, off your direction, you know, yeah. from where you want to be. She sees herself as something mm -hmm. some way, mm -hmm. but she's allowing him to give her something different. And she said, I changed a lot of things about myself. She needs to keep in that upward, um, momentum. Mm -hmm. And then he needs to come aboard himself with that, but she doesn't need to tell him what to do. He has to also, you know, come aboard so so i've seen this i've seen women in relationships actually give a man an ultimatum mm -hmm. and sometimes it's even recommended that they give a man an ultimatum there's a whole show about it it's a whole show yeah. about it and especially like for example you say a woman shouldn't be in a relationship for more than two years right so when they're approaching that mark should a woman go about saying hey look you got 60 more days before you know we can make a decision or i mean like how should she manage a situation where she has these standards and she wants to protect herself and not get manipulated mm -hmm. but at the same time not tell a dude the play so he could run it for her and not truly because that's what he wants okay well i don't see it as a as a play i right. think it's being intentional so i would discuss my intentions along the way and i think what would happen if he's not interested then he would actually the relationship would fade yeah you know, there will be other ways that we pull away from each other. If he is interested but before that two year mark, he would have asked me to marry him and we would be planning a wedding because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. he already knows what's on my mind. And if yeah. he wants to be a part of that, he'll make it happen. Yeah. But I, I was in a similar situation where I dated a man. He I thought he was intentional. I told him straight out the gate, you know, this is my end goal. This will this is and will forever be my end goal, which is being a wife again. And for the first year, we had a glorious first year. And he talked about how amazing I was and what a wonderful wife I was going to make. Second mm -hmm. year, we went into what we call pre-engagement counseling. There is such a thing as counseling before you are even engaged. Mm -hmm. We wow. went into pre-engagement counseling and we were two weeks away from the two years. Now, I knew I was going to pull that trigger. That at two years, the day after, I was going to pull that trigger. Wait, like as in stop dating them? Oh, I was done. <laughs> I was good. We went into the pre-engagement pastor's office, and it's maybe a, maybe a week before. And he just point blank asked him, like, he asked him two questions. Number one, do you want to get married again? He said, oh, yeah, of course I do. Yeah, I love being married. You know, number two, do you want to marry Anita? There you go. He said, I don't know. Wow. I picked my purse up. I thanked the pastor for all he had done. And I went about my business. Absolutely. Wow. Period. Yeah. Did y'all speak ever again after that? We spoke at the three month mark where he tried to come back. I was good. Because wow. once I have to do that, if I if I fire off that shot, it's 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 out of the chamber. It's a done deal. So that's the skill that I often tell women, I wish I could download in them, the ability to walk away. away. You do not give ultimatums. You make it up in your mind that if this isn't happening in the time you've allotted, you walk away. You go about your business. I shouldn't have to convince a man to be with me. No. Nope. Mm. And it shouldn't be hard either, right? <laughs> it's already understood. The yep. intentions are to be married. We're going to do it. date for 10 years. That's it. Mm. That's <laughs> it. We're going to buy a house. We're going to do all these things that <laughs> marriage entails, but we ain't going to get married. That's it. Mm -hmm. so, and and when do you communicate in the dating process that you want to, that the, the end goal is marriage? I, I would do it as a woman that's preserving herself in the very beginning. Yep. You got to, yeah. because, you know, either you're going to understand that we're not getting ready to have them type of nights because, right. you know, you might not, I may not be the woman you want. So you can leave me alone, and That's you right. know that that gets rid of a lot of uh, fluff. You want to call it, it fluff? Oh yeah, it gets rid of a lot of fluff. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> I mean, this is this is really good. This is yeah. really good. I know I know some ladies that's 
especially my strong alpha women. <laughs> they like to, they feel, they feel empowered knowing that they are running things in their relationship and they might've tell their man what they want oh. and they feel like they setting standards. <laughs> But, that, but that's, 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 is that what y'all saying? No, not like that. Because mm -hmm. the, the standard you said is for yourself. It's right, not for right. him. No, but see, yeah. see, that's yeah. the that's the key though. But see, if if you don't understand that, you might think that over communicating these oh, things. Oh, like we about oh, to get married. To, oh, so if you ain't mm -hmm. willing to step to the plate, then you gonna get dropped. Right. Okay, that's not a wife though. That's the wrong disposition. Okay. This is coming from a loving, God fearing uh, yeah. wife position as right. a helpmate. Right. So, so what's your what, what's your whole well, like what's your thoughts on alpha women in general? I don't believe in it. Okay. Period. Why not? I do think women have the skills to be leaders, but mm -hmm. alpha doesn't go along with being a feminine woman. Right. You do have logic. You have that over time. What comes with that's wisdom mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. Um. So I just don't believe in the alpha thing. I think that's just a a modern term, something yeah. else that we've attached to a woman to make her more independent. That pulls her more out of her natural role. Mm -hmm. Just to confuse the situation more. I don't know what's wrong with being a lady. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Um, you can do all these things. You can be a career woman. Mm -hmm. You can have a husband and still take care of him and still be a wife. Mm -hmm. I think a lady has now been uh, derogatory in our, in our yeah. culture. Yeah. It's it's now weak. Yeah. You know, it's someone who's lost. Yeah. It's someone who is, you know, needy. Absolutely. You know, it's, yeah. it's that's someone, what they say, and I think yeah. I'm winning. See. We had uh we had Marcus Wiley on. He said he was saying he was uh having a conversation. He said female, and he said somebody told him like in a conversation like, "Hey, don't say female." He's like, well, "Why can't I say female?" He's like, "Well, because she was like, well, because men use female in to uh, replace the b word." Yeah, and he oh, was just he yeah. just right. He, he was like, "He was like, when that happened?" <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I didn't know that happened either. Right. Right. So he just talked about these ridiculous things that yeah. people come up with. But it is a it is an underlying agenda, you know. I love relating as a woman, as a lady. Yeah. I like that. I don't want to do what men do. I know that's like right. you say, I don't want their jobs. Nope. No. Nope. No mm. part in it. Nope. Mm -mm. So, so let me ask y'all this here. Man, this is a fun conversation, mm -hmm. y'all. And listen, this is what I want everybody to chat. do because we got 1,600 people in here mm -hmm. and we still don't even have 1,000 likes. So let's just push it to 1,200 real quick because we're at 950. Everybody, and it's not the heart. I see a lot of y'all pressing the red heart. It's the thumb. It's the mm. thumb on the actual page. Hit that thumb for us and get these likes up. Get us to 1,200 real quick, guys. Mm -hmm. I want to ask this because a big demographic we have that ask us questions all the time about how they need to be operating is women that actually have children. Mm. Okay? And I want to ask, just give them some game real quick from the wise OGs here on what's the best way to navigate that and how they should best protect themselves and their families. Mm -hmm. Because I'm gonna be honest, if I'm thinking about myself personally, especially as a man with no kids, I do not see myself personally uh, bringing a woman with children into my life being that, first of all, I just wrap my head around taking on the responsibility of a wife. Right. Fatherhood, is not even they. I'm like, let me, I'm gonna read the fatherhood books next. <laughs> I'm reading the marriage books now. All right, let me, fit, let me get this down. So I'm not even there yet. So realistic, but realistically, when I'm thinking about it from a macro perspective, from a nation perspective, I want men to cover these women that have children in these homes. Mm -hmm. I was raised by a stepfather. And I'm better off having a man in the house mm. and not growing up waywardly with just a woman in my home. But I understand the responsibility that is on another man. So with that being the case, how do we best recommend women with children operate, especially looking for a husband? How do they do it the right way to ensure success? I think the operation is still the same. I was a single mother for a mm -hmm. short period of time. Mm -hmm. um, I still learned what it was like to be a wife. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing women need to understand, and I need to understand it too. I needed to understand it back then. Um, my husband came to me. It was an honor for him to ask me to marry him, to give me his last name. There's nothing that supersedes our marriage, mm -hmm. children included. Mm -hmm. So if he's willing to take on another man's child, 
I need to understand that I still need to be in the role. It still needs to be my husband for God first, right. my husband, yeah. me, and the child. Wow. My child does not come before my husband, right. even though it's not his child. Yep. Wow. You rarely hear that. Most yeah. of the ladies say, I'm not putting no man in front of my child. I'm not putting no man in front of my child. That's typically the language and the rhetoric. That right. definitely is. And those are women that are not ready to be wives. Right. Wow. Yeah. That's nothing nothing That's supersedes different. your yeah. marriage. You and your husband That's get it. together, you're becoming one That's on right. one accord. The thought process, the foundation, the principles, the mm -hmm. standards, the values mm -hmm. have to be the same. Well, man, that's a lot. That's, and I think the women might be communicating that because they probably haven't identified even a man that is is that they would even trust right. to take them on and they kid on. So they would, you know, even and I even hear, I even hear. Let me tell you, let me tell you, going back to the young lady I spoke about earlier mm -hmm. who's pregnant and was asking about whether or not she should be dating. I was talking to her about the kind of guys now because I was very clear. We went into dating and the kind of guys now she needs to be transitioning to. Cause I'm like, yo, things are changing. Cause she made it clear she's keeping a child. Mm -hmm. And then she also made it clear that she does not know whether she's dating now, but she knows she will be. And she's just confused about that. And I talked about now the evolution of how she needs to now date and prospect for men, because now the reality of the situation is not only are you looking for a man with very clear husband aspirations, being a woman that wants to date for marriage, mm -hmm. you also need to be looking for father father-like qualities in this man. That's right. And here's what she instantly said. She's like, no, 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 Tom. I'm not looking for a father. Mm. I just want a man to date me. He mm. needs to just date me. I'm not looking for, no, you don't got to be the father to my kid. You just need to date me right now a lot of and do that, that and do yeah. this. And I was just so confused by that yeah. because in my mind, I'm like, okay, so let's say, this dating thing works out really well. Right. And he makes it all the way to the finish line of the husband. Is he allowed to be the husband to you mm -hmm. and still not father? Exactly. Your children? The, I was just very confused by that. And she really was battling me and arguing me down that she does not have to date a man that has these five, because like, she's not looking for a father. She's looking for a man that's, that's a husband, not a father. So interestingly, and I, I know it's be, I know <laughs> you making these faces. Yeah. I know I see it, but it's confusion. It it's confusion out there. Can you talk to some of the ladies with children about the qualities that they should be seeking in their man? And I know you looking at me like, why, why don't, why is it this known? But we need to have this conversation. No, I know it's not known because they don't have a lot of examples and yeah. people, we don't talk about it. There's not a lot of examples of relationships in our community. So it's not known. And of course, what's being taught is no man, black men are no good. Mm -hmm. And especially yeah. when it comes to the the child that your child comes before everything. Right. Go, I'll die for my child, which is all a lie. Kids grow up and they become monsters yeah. sometime. You need to know that. <laughs> <laughs> they do. And you don't even want them around you. Mm. No. They're not mm. supposed to supersede the marriage. But um, the way it looks like if a man is willing to, like I said, honor you with his last name and take up on you and your child, it should be respect that's given. You know, right. you should definitely put that man before. You should know that because you and him together is what's bringing up this child, especially if the father of the child has died, now gone back to his wife or what right. have you. Yeah. You know, that's 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 way out there. And then um, he still needs to have the ability to protect you to have the provision he needs to be that person to um the minister over the house right. he needs to make sure that everything in the house is you know gelling together he needs to make sure that you know and your child knows that this is what a home this is a nuclear family this mm. is this is where you get the best balance from i don't i don't think you have to be a child's actual biological to raise them mm -hmm. you know back in the day that was you know that was a thing that so every child had, had a father. Somebody was going to cover that child. Right. Now it's a little different. Yeah. But um, we just they just need to know that if a man is willing to do that, he's willing to have those fatherly instincts, willing to speak to your child, get on the, mm -hmm. you know, spend time at the school, uh, raise your child as his own. I think you'd have to be God fearing to do that, though. There has mm -hmm. to be some compassion and love there. It has to be shown in order to do that for someone else's child. But also he's going to want his own. Yeah. So you have to be willing to do that also. Oh, uh, right. have his kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some of them will get that man. Sounds like that young lady would. 
and wouldn't want to produce any kids for him because right. she already has one. Right. Because she said she wanted a husband. She didn't want a man to be a father. Mm. Wow. I didn't even peep that one. Yeah. You did? That no, 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 no. You're right. Oh, okay. What I'm yeah. saying is I didn't consider the fact that she might also think the conversation didn't go with her mindset to having more children right. with another man. So we didn't go that far in the conversation, but that's some good food for thought. Do you think yeah. women in general should be more open to dating men with children? And, yeah, absolutely. And I, I yeah. think that's the only way I have pissed a lot of people off on my platform. I think single mothers need to date single fathers. Mm -hmm. I think single Brady people Bunch. need to be with other single people. Yeah, that's your and, first choice. Yeah, I and people have so. really felt a way about that. But I stand by that. If you're a single mother, you need to find a single father. Yeah. And, you know, before I had children, I would only date and marry men who didn't. I wound up marrying a man who didn't have any children, and we married and had three children. Once I had those three children, I only dated men who had children. So. I, I personally think that is the logical thing to do, mm -hmm. because <laughs> if you think about the way a single man with no kids operates, right. he's got, you know, yeah. especially if he's a good dude and he's God fearing, like we're talking about, he's got lots of options. Right. So if he's thinking about which option to select. Yeah. He's going to, by default, choose the less challenging situation. That's it. Not that he can't be in love with this other woman who has mm -hmm. children, but it's just going to come with you know inherent problems right that he's gonna have to be ready to deal with maybe it. maybe if, if it's done the right way you no. know because it, and then too it all depends on your age because the yeah. older you get you tend to understand things mm. you know um if it's a husband that is a man that is uh the father of the house you know he's he's the provider he's the father now he's a daddy but and he's also dealing with a biological father mm -hmm. that understand that he's a good man and, and he's standing in the gap because he couldn't be there for whatever reason. And that could work out really well. But even still, e even if all of those are going to play, it's still additional challenges. It's like I got to have the relationship with the woman, the kid, the biological father, right. maybe his wife and his family, you right. know, and kind of all three families. It's just ex additional layers that I think if a single man is thinking about those things, right. Right. I think one situation looks a lot more challenging. Not that it can't be done, no. right, right, but it's just a little bit more challenging. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a that's a man in a very different place in his life. Right. He got to be, gotta be ready. He got to be absolutely oh, ready. ready for everything that comes with. And you're going to click and he's going to express his readiness. Like it's like no confusion <laughs> about a man. Yes. That's ready for that type of responsibility. He's going to want all the smoke. He yeah. like you, the kids, the, the, the scrub that you used to be with all right. of them. I'm right. Taking, like, and the funny thing is we actually did an episode on that a while ago, one of our earlier lives. We had a woman on here. Um, big shout out to Adriana Mason. I think if I'm not mistaken, she was had two kids coming out of a divorce and she married another brother. And I think they either had a third and I think they had a third child together. This is actually April Mason's daughter. Yeah. And um, dope thing about it was she had a whole strategy to how a woman who was divorced mm -hmm. with two kids at like the age of like 24 mm -hmm. got her got herself back remarried and what it was was she said she only oh, was one of the main things she did she said she literally would not even if it was a guy who expressed interest and he didn't have kids he would yep. she would not entertain men yep. who did he not have, have children kids. especially yeah. at her level yeah of having children, she said the only man, the, the likelihood that a man that has never experienced fatherhood right. that would take my situation on was so slim that that was how I filtered yeah. the people, the men that I brought into my life. Yep. And thus she got remarried. And when I tell you that brother, if y'all watch that show, that brother was clear about whose kids those was. Oh, he was very, yeah, he was ready. Very right. clear about it. So it's possible, and, and and I think that's just a very important conversation. But why is that a problem, though? Why why is it? Why, why do you think women have a problem? I mean, because it's a it's a guy. He loves you. He just got some kids. Like, why is that an issue when you got you single? You got kids too. It shouldn't be. And if anything, we have similar life experience. That's really, what I'm. Thinking. That's what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. A man who's been married and and divorced. A man who has children. We have similar life experience. Our level of compatibility could be, I'm not saying for sure, but it could be greater than me. I've, I've met men my age who have never been married and don't have any children. And I am not interested in them. There is a whole piece of my life that made up who I am that they don't have. I actually believe, and this is very controversial, you don't become a full-on complete adult until you've had children. 
So there's a part of him that I believe will never be at a level of maturity that I am. Like I have people that I sacrifice for on the regular, that I serve on the regular. He doesn't know what that is. <laughs> so, you know, we're, the chances of us being truly compatible are slim. So no, I avoid men who don't have children. I avoid men who've never been married because we just don't have that life compatibility. Mm. So wow. he, need, he need to be 45 year old mm -hmm. with, with at least yeah. one kid. And married, <laughs> yeah. And I have, I've met men 45. Notice someone children, 10 years younger. Y'all didn't even catch that. Children were grown. Mm, Their children were grown just like my kids are grown. Mm. They've been married. They got divorced. They married young and their kids are grown. Mm. So it's possible. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. The, as far as just in general, just for my single ladies out there, not necessarily talking to the ones with the kids. Mm -hmm. What are some other things that y'all see right now that for the ladies in particular are probably keeping them in the state of being single at this point? Some things that they need to work on right now to break <laughs> to to get to the next level of that. What's some mm -hmm. what, 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 what are you seeing? I think it's the girlfriends, that sisterhood thing. I think we just need to get a mind of your own and mm -hmm. do what's right. Uh, become an adult, you know, again, mm -hmm. preserve yourself. If you want to be married, mm -hmm. seek out that relationship with your creator, God. And, um, you know, do the right thing. Don't don't go for the material thing. Don't make yeah. money your God because a man, it doesn't make a man. And I think so often that's what women equate nowadays. Right. Anyway, that's that was that's what makes a man. Right. And it, it doesn't has nothing to do with it. You got to be able to go through it with a man, your man, your husband. What if he doesn't have any money? You going to leave him? <laughs> you know, you have to be able to go through those trenches with those men that you decide to spend your life with. I think it's the homegirls too. Mm. I think that's a oh, good the homegirls is it. I think the homies. The sisterhood. The sisterhood. <laughs> you know, I was, I've uh, never heard that being a reason, by the way. It, so it's funny because I was uh I was dealing with a young lady and, um you know, I had like this little situation playing like a, like a date and what, what not. And um, she ended up calling me and she's like, hey, you know, I, I'm, I can't go on a date. I'm, I'm with this person. Now, she knew I knew this person. This is one of her friends. And I'm like, OK, you know, I'm like, all right, cool. You know, don't worry about it. And then when it came back around, she wanted to reschedule. I'm like, I just told her, like, hey, I'm, I'm not interested. And she was really bothered by that. She's like, wow, you know, I got this situation with my friend. And my thing was like, don't your friend know you trying to get a man? I'm like, don't you see this friend? every few days right. and all of a sudden she got an emergency where you got to miss out on a date with a man that's really trying to you know court you mm -hmm. because she got some so she got a nigga problem oh okay. <laughs> right she got a man and you don't and you oh that's what i'm saying <laughs> so i tried to let her know that like to get her to understand that logic but she just clearly didn't mm -hmm. understand but see but that's when i knew it's like this woman is clearly she's just not the woman for me yeah. because of the way she operates and what she thinks right. and because of the friends she keeps. Right. Now, my thing is you got this one, you know, I'm considering age, my age, their age. Mm -hmm. You got this woman having this man problem and she know what you got going on as well. Mm -hmm. And she didn't tell you, Hey, look, we can deal with this later. Yeah. This Ryan, I know I rock with Ryan. I know Ryan, he's going to take care of you. Hey, why don't we come back to this? So I just thought that in my mind, I think a lot of women, have similar issues going on with their friends where yeah. their friends are emotionally unraveled where you got this woman who on the fringe of getting herself together and mm -hmm. going out there dating mm -hmm. but she got these friends that got all this emotional distress and the rest going on particularly with men yep. that's clouding their judgment so when they do get a man that's in front of them that's willing to take it there with them or at least showing this level of, of high interest they can't even uh this they can't even they don't even have the discernment to understand mm -hmm. that hey this is something i should try to stick with and instead they do exactly what the friend has mm -hmm. done and they create these these man problems right and you know too that women we live through each other's traumas mm -hmm. you know he did it to that one did it to you so he's probably gonna do it to you too even mm -hmm. though it didn't happen right. right so that could have been a lot of it so she was crying over her her girlfriend's boyfriend. So you probably going to be just like the girlfriend's boyfriend. So really right. don't waste a whole lot of time there. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. Do you see this? What, what, what's one of the big uh, reasons you see, Anita? So mindset. I'm a big, you know, metaphysical, spiritual person. Um, and I know words, the words that people speak, the thoughts that they predominantly think. If their mindset is incredibly negative, mm. uh, I have a 
favorite saying that I share with all of my clients, and it is, I don't think about things I don't want to happen. Like I don't, I don't speak about it and I don't think about it. If I don't want it to happen, I don't speak on it or think about it. I have a very positive mindset. I believe that, you know, men are amazing. Men are all good. Um, They're here to serve me. They're here to protect me. Like that's the language I use when I'm talking about men. And, you know, I don't hear that from other women. I don't see that. I I see them proceeding everything with their negative thoughts or their negative words or the sisterhood all, (laughs) you know, bringing the negativity circle. And that is going to keep a lot of them from meeting and retaining a really great guy. So you got to get your mind right. You got to make it up in your mind first. Like everything I've ever manifested in this world, I saw it. Like I saw it, I visualized it, I smelled it, I touched it, I tasted it. And that is what I teach people as well. Like if you're not willing to do that, if you're, if you're in that opposite land, that's probably what you're going to get. So if you're in the land of, you know, all men cheat, all men lie, or men, even the men don't want to get married. I don't, I don't even find myself thinking on that. I just say, yes, I see couples getting married. I had five premarital couples get married this summer. So clearly people are getting married. That's what I focus on. I'm, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm replaying that in my mind. Excuse people me. get married. Men still propose. Men are more romantic than women. Mm-hmm. So those are the things I'm thinking about all the time. And I have to train women to do that. Women, evolutionarily, they are... Um, they're privy to negativity. Like that's in our DNA. We, we tend to go toward what's negative and we have to fight that. I teach women, please fight the negativity. I know it's in you, but fight the negativity. Cause if that's where your mind is going, that's where your thoughts and your words are going. That's where your life is going. Mm. I, I'm with you on that. The mindset, cause yeah. it's the language and yeah. the things that the hot topics that really, uh, alert you to people's mindsets, particularly yep. women, because yep. I do think that a lot of the social content that's put out there is driven by women. I mean, because mm-hmm. women, they spend the most money. They are the most coveted by these corporations, yep. especially when it comes to social media outlets. Yep. They know that whatever the women go to, that's what's going to be better for for dollars. And the, a lot of the language, even around the relationships, like the narcissist thing, mm. it's like <laughs> the likelihood that you are dating a narcissist is so one percent. It's so small. One percent. It just can't be. All these guys are just that good. Right. They just that good at being mm. crazy. And they were intentionally set out to ruin your life. Right. But I think it Well, I know just the, with the information that women are choosing to consume mm-hmm. outside of Harley Initiated and, and, and some some other mm-hmm. platforms, it really is information that validates the way they already think, mm-hmm. which I think is a huge problem. And, you know, that's why we got the platform to, yeah. to really shed light on some of these things. But uh, I, I just think that mindset, <laughs> I mean, because I feel like I'm in the trenches with the women's mindset. Mm-hmm. I be dating. Mm-hmm. And some of these things that I hear and come across is is, is just really ridiculousness. Yeah. And, and I just don't think that it's just that many bad men around. And honestly, I, 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 want, I want to actually uh, emphasize something that you said. I think I was really good because be, especially because a lot of people in here right now, you're in a place of growth. Like, you know, you Mm -hmm. want something more, you want something better and you actually taking steps to look for it. So be wary to look for things that validate what you already think, Mm -hmm. because rarely in that validation is where your growth lies. Right. It's where you are challenged, right? Where your thinking is challenged to get pushed to a new level, to get a new mindset, a new set of thoughts in your mind, Right is where your the, the next level is really unlocked. And that's another thing because when when you know you I'm looking at you you ladies and you're telling me that most of your following is men. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, and I think this goes for men too because if we every day have a platform where we hold men accountable, we would draw nothing but ladies. Yep. If I every day have a platform where I hold women accountable, I will draw the opposite. Mm-hmm. So the reality of the situation is no one wants to be held accountable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's literally proven just in that. 
So the fact that we can have this chat here today, y'all, y'all don't understand the fact that we have men and women right now all watching the exact same video is relatively monumental. It's huge. For us to not have, especially for us to have constructive conversation in this space. But what is it in particular? Because obviously we know the ladies in particular, accountability is tricky. Mm -hmm. Right? We know that. We know that. Mm -hmm. All right? And I know, especially with, on your end, being ladies, mm -hmm. why do you feel like a and I, and I deal with it personally too, even in the relationships that I've had personally. Why do you think that, that the ladies in particular struggle with the accountability like they do? I mean, they're not called to, to be accountable. Like she was saying, you know, I wouldn't want to be a man. You know, mm -hmm. men, they, they get it done. Like they pull no punches. They get it done. They take on things that need to be done. They do it. Um, it is hard to be a man. And I think our culture has, you know, pedestalized women and um, not held them to really any standard. And so now that we're asking, okay, hey, we want to hold you to some sort of standard. We want to mm. see you grow up. There are a lot of women who if they had a child before the age of 21, their their emotional growth is stunted. And we're saying, hey, we need you to grow up. We need you to, you know, work on your ego. We need you to be held accountable and responsible. We need you to apologize. We need you to see your part in it. You know, that's a big ask because they're like, what? You know, it's, it's these men. And I'm like, no, they, you're half of this equation too. So right. that's what I want to see happen. I want to see women take their share, their fair share of whatever's happened. I took my fair share of my divorce. You know, I learned so much from that divorce. Um, and I took my fair share of what I knew was my issues and my problems within that marriage. Uh, and I've just applied a whole new knowledge, whole new, whole new operating system. I had to take out the old system and I put I like in that. a whole new operating yeah. system. And Every man I've dated since then has gotten better and better and better. And that's wow. a testament to just me growing and me attracting something different and being able to choose something different. So that's how I've seen my growth. That's what I want women to do as well. But, but that starts with them looking at themselves. If you're not willing to look at yourself, that's not going to happen. Mm. And I think you said just in general, because I, I kind of want to go into that a little bit too, because I'm, I'm curious, because you got a, you were divorced probably about 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I know you said infidelity had a lot to do with it mm -hmm. on your husband's end. Right. But did you play a role at all in that infidelity? Like looking at the accountability aspect in that, in that, just kind of going into that. Did you play any role in that? Do you think looking back at it? The role that I played in that was... I chose someone that I didn't really like, and I chose someone that I didn't really trust. And that, of course, played out in our day-to-day -day interaction. Like mm. I, I didn't really like him, I didn't really trust him, um, and, and therefore I didn't really respect him. And so, of course, he was going to go somewhere else where he felt liked and respected and trusted. <laughs> so, wow. And that, that's how that works, you know? So, yes, I had to take a hard look at that because even though I had made that choice, God still holds me accountable. Like, okay, Anita, you married this man. I need you to respect him. And I didn't. There were times where I didn't. So I had to learn the hard way. Okay, I want you to choose differently. I want you to prioritize respecting him, trusting him, liking him. And you're, you're held to that standard regardless. Once you marry that man, these are the things that God requires of you. And I didn't always do that. Wow. wow. That's that's deep. I'm curious, yeah. Anita, because I, I've dated, just only dated, though. You know, I've never been mad or anything like that or came close to it. But I've dated women that I didn't like. Mm -hmm. And I had to, this was in the past. Mm -hmm. I really had some things going on internally, self-esteem and right. self-worth, the main thing, which, which is why I was doing that. But I'm curious, like, what was your deal? Like, <laughs> and tell us why you went about marrying this man that you actually didn't like or didn't trust and how many people both men and women do you think actually oh, continue yeah. to date people they really are not into oh a whole lot of people and there's lots of different reasons i was you know i was 30 i just turned 30 um i was ready to settle down i was ready to have a family 
And I think a whole lot of people, I was having sex, you know, so mm -hmm. I'm sure that blinded me. Um, but that's a whole lot of people's story. They're having sex, you know, or they're reaching a major milestone in their life. They're ready to kind of get to that next level in their life. And so they will, someone will cross their path and they'll say, you, you right there. Yeah, we're going to do this thing. And that was, you know, definitely not the way that should have gone. I take marriage very seriously. Um, had the infidelity not continued and become very chronic and become very toxic, I probably would still be married to that person. But that marriage was going to, everyone was going to, it was like throwing a grenade into our house. Everyone was going to get blown up. Like had mm. I stayed in that marriage, no one would have survived. So at this point, I was like, look, I'm going to leave this marriage. This way you can survive. We can survive. You know, the kids can survive. I can survive and you can survive. And there are a lot of people that are doing that. I see a lot of couples don't like each other. You know, they thought sex was the reason. Oh, they're so great because of the sex. And then once that went away, they were like, no, they're not so great. I really don't like them. Um, they're incompatible. We had an incompatibility. Someone who, like you said, I gave him the blueprint. Oh, I want to believe her. Oh, yeah, I believe. And come to find out he didn't. <laughs> you know, so... I learned a lot from that relationship. That man so. was fake believing in God. That's crazy. Yep. yep. You it's, better you better not give him the play. It's crazy. It's, it's crazy when you say that out loud. Like, yeah. but people, people really do date people and marry people they do not rock with. So you yeah. know that's that's really incredible. As when when I think like, about that, you looking like wow. Because and, and notice, I noticed this too. You said you didn't like him, you didn't trust him, mm -mm. but I imagine you were telling him every day that you loved him. Right. And that's that's. That's the, the devil's confusion, right? So how we do it in the world is it is lust. Mm. Then we think we love, and then maybe we like you. Whereas God's way is, I got to like you. And that like should lead to a mutual respect, a love. And then lust is the last thing we're going to put on the top. So, I mean, most people do it that way. They come in with lust. They think they love the person. And now they're questioning whether they like the person. So that's why you are so right. We got to take that off the table. Let me see who you really are. I, you know, when we're not doing anything, that's going to help me to determine, do I really like you? Are you, are you just a friend? Are mm -hmm. you a friend? One of the questions you asked earlier was about how do you know a woman has these wife qualities? How I date now is I bring a man into my life as my friend, right? Whatever I would do for my friends, I do for him. No questions asked. If I have dinner cooking, yeah, come on by, get a plate or whatever, right? If he needs me to pick him up from the hospital or whatever he got going on, I treat him as a friend. And whatever I give to my friends, I give to him. And that way he's like, dang, Anita's cool. Like, I really like her. Like, there's nothing intimate going on, but, you know, she's a cool person. And then he can then determine, okay, well, I'm kind of feeling her too. Okay, this is giving you an idea of what life would be like, right? Because lust is really the last piece. That's the easiest piece. But do you like me? Mm, yeah. Do you like me? That's the real question. But that's how I do it now. I, I invite a man in. I make him my friend. I, I introduce him to everybody I know. And people think that's odd. But guess what? All these people are vetting him. Mm-hmm. All these people are telling me what they think about him. And he's just cool. He's just a friend. Everybody meets him. You know, he comes over. He hangs out. We do stuff together. That's all it is. And, and y'all, first of all, y'all going to have to watch this whole thing over. Y'all going to have to watch SB faces uh, <laughs> you know, the whole time. <laughs> What do we hear? Well, you gotta get her thoughts about yeah, that. Yeah, I, I want I want to just get your thoughts in general. Yeah, have you not heard, have you not heard of that before? People dating people, they not. Well, really. I, I know that you come to those conclusions in the end, but yeah. I always wondered what actually got you to saying I do. Mm. You know what was good because something was good, and I think we need to share what oh, yeah. was good. Oh yeah, because you're not gonna be. It's we all get the revelation in the end, right? I need to know on this side. Am I kidding myself? Cause this was good. And then I later on figure out, I don't like him. I need to know what was good. What was good, Anita? He was masculine. Um, he believed in gender roles. Um, he was a provider, a protector. He fit the mold, you know, he fit the masculine mold and together we were going to create this empire. And so, you know, I think we would have been great business partners. 
I still believe that we would have been great business partners. We should never have been married. Okay. Wow. Oh, so you, you liked how, was he, is he like today? Is he successful? Oh, he's a multimillionaire. Okay. So he was pretty much, you liked where he was headed in life. Oh, you yeah, definitely. Definitely. Got he it. had purpose. He had vision. He was a leader and he, he led. But you didn't know he was going to be a butthole on the way. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that kind of comes along with it. Right, right. <laughs> really? Wait, wait, that kind of comes along with what? Success. Oh. Talk to me about that. Because men are focused. They're they're a little bit selfish. They're focused. They're goal oriented. They ain't got time for all this love and touching and affection and stuff that we that women want along the way. They're right. focused. But what probably should have happened is a conversation should have went a little something like this. I understand you have a plan, but now you planned a wife. So now you got to incorporate me into your plan. Yep, yep. And it needs to look a little different. Mm -hmm. So whatever you need me to do to make sure you stay on your you know, your focus and your plan of being a multimillionaire, it needs to include your wife. Right. Because it didn't include her. You think, Anita, if y'all would have had conversations similar, it would have been possible to salvage the relationship? Um, I don't think that relationship could have been salvaged because, like I said, the, the infidelity went to a very oh, toxic okay. level. Okay, got, got it you. It went to got a you. very toxic but do, level. do you think maybe if you'd have had the conversations, the infidelity, see, y'all didn't do relationship. He right. stayed on his single journey yeah. and you stayed a single woman married. Y'all yeah. were two single people married. Right. When you go into a marriage, yep. your mindset must change. Yep. He needs to start looking out for you first and vice versa. But he just couldn't do that. Right. So if you could have come to him and told him, hey, look, your plans have changed now because you decided to get married at mm -hmm. this particular time. Mm -hmm. You don't think it would have changed anything if y'all could have had that? Uh, I mean, he had a lot of trauma um, and I've had I have mine, you know, that I've since worked through. So could we have heard each other, you know, through that trauma, through that wounding? I mean, it's possible. Um, I've done a lot of work. I take marriage very seriously. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a big reason why I'm not remarried, because I've had two opportunities and I've said, mm, this has got to be right. You know, I can't have mm -hmm. another divorce. This has got to be right. So I take marriage very, very seriously now. Um, but yeah, he's been he's on his fourth marriage. Wow! <laughs> See, he never converted. He's turning them out. He, wow. never, he never converted. No, wow! He never took on that husband mindset. He's that <laughs> successful man mindset, right? So that's interesting. But see, I like what you're talking about about this successful brother, because I think a lot of people want the successful brother, but don't necessarily know exactly what comes along with that guy. And I think it's some specific issues in particular that does come with a man that has a very vast vision. Yeah. I remember uh, I heard Dr. Darius Daniel say this, which by the way, I think we're gonna have him on the show next week. In a couple right. weeks, yeah. Um, he said, in order for a man to achieve success, he must obsess. Mm -hmm. And with obsession comes, ne comes neglect. That's yep. it. And, you know, I guess that comes to question, do you think most women can really deal with what it comes with with a man that truly is having the trajectory of like a high level success mm. Mm. what's your thoughts on that sb for me i build with my husband i think my husband is very successful now but we build together going in the front door we build together um and i still think that's the way to do it mm -hmm. to me that's an actual ultimate test you have a woman this is a little bit off but if you have a woman and y'all having a conversation and you're thinking about being married Ask that woman, are you interested in having one pot? Mm. Would you put all your money in one pot with me? Is this something we can do? And that right there, that'll answer all your questions. Yep. You know, that'll give you, does she trust you? Does she like you? Uh, is she willing to build with you? That answers the total question right there. Mm. But I just think when a man, I think we all need to be reminded of what marriage is. Mm. So even if that man is super successful and is on that journey, has not achieved it yet. Once he alters that journey and decides he wants a wife, which some of them do, because a lot of them say, hey, look, I got to get her now, because when I get successful, I'm not going to be able to trust anybody. I yeah. don't know what she wants. Yeah. You know? They need to figure out how to incorporate that woman into that new, into that plan right. that they had for themselves before. And it is always a way because she's still, she is your wife. Um, you all should be on one accord and have that same plan. You have to figure out how to put her in there. Right. So it can work. But she still has to know how to play that role. But you have to be the one to give it to her and then let her actually play it out to the hilt. But she still has to be a wife. Wow. That's a good game, fellas. Mm -hmm. You got to give you have to give her the plan. You have mm -hmm. to give her the plan. She has to see that same vision. Yep. You know, we got to be on that. We got to see that same vision. 
Right. And, and let me on the opposite end, if a, a woman is in a relationship, but she's unsure about the man she's with and his genuine interest in her, mm-hmm. how can she tell if a man, you know, although he may have committed, but he may not really be interested. How can she tell? What are some signs? Not spending time with her. Mm-hmm. Men spend time with the woman they want to be with. They mm-hmm. make time, I should say. Mm-hmm. He, she doesn't have to ever question whether he cares or not. He's going to do something. Right. You know, he's going to put that time in with her. That's what I think. That's very true. Because <laughs> right now, I'm busier than I've ever been in my life. And I'm still figuring out how to make time mm-hmm. yeah. at this point. And the reality of the situation is I further think down the line too is it's really disingenuine for a man to tell you too that he doesn't have time mm-hmm. because especially if the brother is ambitious, all he's doing is putting himself in a position to be even busier than he is today because yeah. that's what he's building. He's building, he's building something to create a ton of opportunity. So a man really doesn't get less busy. Right. He mm-hmm. just adjust his priorities as he gets more busy and pretty much you get exposed in a busy schedule Mm. because it's really about now in a busy schedule are you worthy to be prioritized among the opportunities in his day but but context though that's not you know because i think some (laughs) some people might take that as we just start dating he should have that philosophy Right. But this is a, a young lady that Tyshawn has been dating for some time. Yeah. And that he has expressed a very serious interest in. So I think yeah. that's different. Because yeah, yeah, I've absolutely. heard that. I've heard that from women. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yo, you've been dating this dude for like two days. Right? <laughs> He's busy. That's a fact. Like, he don't know you like that. You know right. what I mean? Right. It's gradual. It's gradual. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. It's so gradual. I, I think we should taper those expectations and, here, and understand context. Here's what I want y'all to do too, guys. By the way, I want y'all to send in these final cohort of super chats because I got to get these ladies up out of here. We've been rocking with y'all for two hours and 40 minutes so far right now. We are going in. So do me a favor. Quickly smash that thumbs up on your computer. It's that great thumbs up on your computer to get us these likes and send in these last cohort of questions Mm -hmm. that you can super chat to us 10 and above. We'll ask it to these wonderful ladies here. But I just want to let y'all know, y'all have done it. First of all, over 1,600 people in the chat, more than we've ever had. This is a hardly initiated record tonight. Yeah, yeah, tremendous record. All right, tremendous record. So that means the people, if y'all are getting blessed right now, just drop a quick bless in the chat right now if y'all are in here getting blessed. Shout out to Elvani. She says, how come there's so much generalization about gender? Because mm. there is biology. Like there is biology. There's evolutionary science. And this is the part that, you know, I will I will die on this hill. That there is, there are just things that, you know, biology and evolutionary psychology, like that just is. And it's not to say that all men are, you know, doing the same thing or all women are doing the same thing, but there are what we call the exception and there's the rule. And so, you know, there, there is the exception. There's some women who are naturally masculine. They're naturally in that energy, but they are the exception. They are not the rule. So yeah, you gotta be willing to, to say, okay, this is biology. This is, this is evolutionary psychology. It's been around for thousands of years. Yes. It's not going to change now. And generalizations generally make conversation a lot better. Right? Mm-hmm. Because if we were talking not about all, specific, not all, I'm not saying, all. right, right. <laughs> I mean, we just couldn't have a conversation if we no. weren't talking like this. So, right. good question. Good and what's question. your, but what's your, what's your thoughts on ASB? Yeah, it's the same. Um, we do that because, like she said, it's biology. The majority of people act a certain way. We just, just how we were groomed and yeah. yeah. It's just what it is. And we can't say not all at the beginning. We can't put yeah. that disclaimer yeah. out all the, all time. the time. But you got to know something. Being married is a very exclusive club. So <laughs> I will say that. It, it is, is what it exclusive is. Club. Club. Yeah. It's a very and exclusive club. Yeah. Not everybody will make it. I yep. think that's also reality of the situation. Yeah. Even if we we try our damnness, it's just mm-hmm. not the case for everybody. So what, what do you say to those people that, you know, they are 60, 70 plus They've been trying for a very long time mm. and it's just looking, you know, not likely that they are going to be able to go ahead and settle mm. down with the, in that long term situation. Like what? How do you how do you still stay 
motivated and fulfilled if that is what the circumstance that you probably looking at? If you're an older person and you still want to be married, mm -hmm. I still say you got to check yourself. Mm -hmm. I just think there's a companion out there for everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's got to be something that you're leading with, something that you are putting out there. Maybe your energy is not good. Yeah. Who knows what? But you still got to check yourself yeah. and just try to change who you are. Elevate yourself. I, I mostly say that. Elevate who you are and your thought process. And I think the good things will come to you. Yeah. And one is a whole number. One is a whole number. Um, I am creating a life that I absolutely love and my hope is on the journey of just creating this awesome life, all the things that I do, all the people that I meet, all the experiences that I have. I am going to meet my purpose partner on that journey, but I love the life that I have. If I didn't, I'm, I'm still, life is great. I have an amazing life. Um, and if I did not meet that purpose partner, like, okay, that, that I'm not going to shrivel up and die. I'm going to keep living the great life that I'm living. Like that's all I can do. So yeah, create a life that's interesting. Create a life that that you enjoy, right? And to me, it's more likely that someone will want to join that life. One of the uh, issues that I have with a lot of women that I coach is they're boring. They're not interesting. Mm. They don't have good conversation skills. Like, no, don't nobody want to join your life. Don't nobody want to go home after work and just sit there and watch reality TV and, you know, no. Be exciting, be interesting, you know, and I, I, I really encourage women like create a life that you love. But what they're really looking for, they want a man to come in and like give them this great mm. life or this great. No, you do that. You do that on your own. You don't need a man to come in and give purpose to your life. My life has a lot of purpose. Mm. I need to find the man whose life also has that purpose. We come together and that thing exponentially blows up. That's what I'm in search of. But I'm already on the mission that God gave me. And so I'm just hoping that on this path, the guy comes along. He's, he's like, oh, my God. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm doing that. You know, OK, let's do this together. <laughs> like, that's what I'm hoping. But a lot of women, there's no purpose. They're not interesting. Their conversation skills are dry. You know, they don't have any hobbies. There's no interest. There's no friends. I have a lady now who has one friend. And I'm like, OK, like self-reflect can we self-reflect <laughs> yeah, what's, what's happening here please you know do. nobody like you yeah they have we have to be willing to do that and do that work but one is a whole number you know if you don't find that person create the life that you love that's what i've been encouraging people to do just just create a life that's fun for you that's it mm. let's go ahead actually and take on some of these uh super chats that we got up in here that just came in shout out to ssj sent over super chat says what are your thoughts on age gaps? I am 33. The guy I've been dating is 28. Well, that's five years. That's five years. So it's, it's you kind of missed the conversation. Yeah, we talked about age gaps a little bit, but no, let's take this one in cool. particular. With, within that seven years is what y'all mentioned. Yeah. Seven to, I think, six, six, seven, six to seven to 12. I think it's good. But is she the oldest? Yeah, she's, she's 33. The She's 33. And he's 28. And he's 28. Oh, that's, that's, yeah, he in the whole phase. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like he's he just having yeah, yeah. he's just having a good time. That's what that's what it sounds like. I mean, just from just ages in general. Yeah. yeah. And first of all, I mean, what's your thoughts? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, did this man express <laughs> interest in one of the same things that right. you want? Right. Like, has he communicated anything outside mm -hmm. of the 20 year year to 28 year old generalizations <laughs> right. that we're going to make right. about where a man is at 28, 28 years old. <laughs> yeah. Right. If he has not absolutely swung the generalization of that age, then you probably shouldn't be fooling with her, right. fooling with the guy unless you're just trying to have a real good time. Right. I, I yeah. think so. I think once you get, you know, 45 or older, I think it's probably different. You date an yeah. older woman, but I mean, at 28, I mean, it's just fine. Yeah. Facts. Generally. Yeah. Generally, oh. facts. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's some different breed brothers out here. Yep. Yeah, but unless you find one of them, you know, Dalmatians. <laughs> yeah. He just having a. Uh, he might be a Rottweiler. <laughs> <laughs> and it is what it is. But let me tell y'all, ladies, thank you so much for coming up in here and blessing the audience tonight because I had such an amazing time. The conversation was absolutely incredible. I want you guys to go ahead and make sure y'all understand this is what it is. Every Monday and Wednesday night. 
or hardly initiated and you better not leave without subscribing to this channel i know it's a lot of new people in here right now go ahead and click the subscribe button right now because we want to keep growing this subscribership we want to keep mm. growing this and we want to keep getting amazing talent like the talent we have here right now and they like to look at our subscribers to make sure we qualified yes. for them to get up on this joint. That's a fact. So help grow our subscribership. And listen, Wednesday is going down again. We're actually having Lovepreneur on here this upcoming Wednesday. So we're talking a bit of marriage and money, okay, and how those two need to mix, how to integrate that relationship successfully into your relationship. So that's what we're going to be talking about here this upcoming Wednesday. So y'all make sure you stay tuned. Yes. And I think we got a last cohort of um some uh some super chats ron before we get up out of here no just just one shout out to shanae shanae shout out to shanae she already sent the super chats this has been mind-blowing mm -hmm. god's principles equals great relationships Absolutely. amen to that and listen yeah. I, I want my ladies to give i want y'all to give some kind words to the people before we get up out of here mm -hmm. is there anything that y'all want to say to the ladies to the men in the room because we still got over 1500 people in here before we send them off tonight I just want to say thank you so much for having me here. I am so happy that there are women in the audience. And would you all please go over to SB Nation, SBU Live, subscribe to my channel, turn your yeah. alert on, and come be with me when I'm live. And yes. I talk like this all the time. I like that. And I honestly, like that. And, I, and I promise you, listen, yeah, definitely subscribe because y'all, yeah, this, this is a powerful sister right here. Yeah. And I got a feel this won't be her last time on Harley Initiative. What you think? I said I suggest not. Okay. 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 <laughs> hey, look, if we should get her back, say bring her back in the chat. But Anita, bring let the back. people know. Let you let people know your thoughts. Uh, I just want to say thank you so much mm -hmm. for having me. It's been a pleasure. Um, Better Love Movement is actually my platform. So everywhere in the world, it is Better Love Movement. The website, the Instagram, the Facebook, the YouTube channel is Better Love Movement. Uh, my entire reason for being is to create better love. So I want you to ask nice. yourself when you're making a decision, is that decision based on fear or is it based on love? Try to do what love would do. I know that's a big ask, but do what love would do not what fear would do all right boom and there you have it people good. listen first off y'all already know i appreciate everybody in here that has been supporting us that has been subscribing that has been liking that has been helping grow the channel and boom we're gonna we're gonna bless y'all tonight actually look at that we got some books here we're gonna do a giveaway for the people let's do a giveaway for the people we're gonna give away two books today two we're gonna give away two two books today for our people out here and let us know what books we got here but uh let, uh, please, so, please so, let so, us know so, what these yeah, books so, are before we go uh, ahead and go ahead and hold that up and let's talk about these two books real quick so we can go ahead and and, and uh do a, a giveaway this is there dope go. all right so do well this book is for women who are already in relationships or married this is going to teach you all of the tenets of femininity and how to have that relationship that you really want to have ladies if you're already in relationship bam i'm holding this thing up here hold on wait oh. Bam, back it okay. up a little bit. Bam, do well. All right. That's the first book here. Okay. And then we got the second book. I'm going to hold it up for you. Choose yep. well. Go Choose. ahead. Choose well is for all of my single ladies. They need that one. This is teaching you the, the vetting skills that you need so that you can choose a really great guy. Okay. Yes. So that's for the singles. And this is for the ladies who are in relationships or married. Boom, boom, boom. So we got two of them. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to make it even better. I want you to sign both of these. We're okay. going to sign them for our people. Mm -hmm. And what I want you to do, okay, for the person that's going to qualify for this here, all right, it needs to be somebody that is not only subscribed to our YouTube channel, mm -hmm. okay, you need to also follow our Instagram, hardly mm -hmm. initiated Instagram. You need to follow our Facebook page. I bet a lot of y'all didn't even know we had a Facebook page. Yes, oh, hardly wow. initiated on Facebook is consistent everywhere you go yep. all right and you also need to follow us on apple Podcasts. look at that do another one in there for you guys <laughs> and so this, I'm, I'm, yep. I'm, I'm gonna add a challenge in there for you guys and then yeah. send, send us an email oh. send us an email just says book and we're gonna choose a winner and just make sure that you're a member you got to be a member of the youtube channel right. that yes has to be. it's only for the members and we will respond back to you okay we will respond and that's another one right you have to be a member of yep. the channel we will respond back to you letting you know that you got it. And uh, obviously we're going to get your information so we can ship you, you know, the book to your location, so on and so forth. So again, 
That's follow the YouTube or subscribe to the YouTube, follow the Instagram, follow the Facebook, follow the Apple Podcast. Yeah. All right. And then you need to be a member of our channel. You do those things, you send us over an email to info at hardlyinitiated.com. Dot com. We're gonna start dropping these photos. And we're gonna go way, ahead too. and drop books to you. And look, we gonna, yeah. we, we gonna cover the shipping and everything for that. We, we, we do, we really do. We, got, we, we sent the book to the U <laughs> to, to Ja. Uh I think we sent out one to the UK. I think I, I wow. think we sent one to Lydia yeah. and then Anna Dominique. I think she was out in Cali. Man. So they sent us some photos too. So we're gonna post those in the in the in the yeah. YouTube um uh, the YouTube chat. So absolutely, just be patient with absolutely. So again, thank you, ladies, so yes. much. And yeah. we're gonna look out for those emails that come in, and we're gonna get y'all a signed copy of these books. But like y'all already know, hardly initiated, we are out.